Two-step drop. He's looking. Now he's under pressure, and he will be sacked from behind. Sacked at the 20, and Coach Jeff Herrick runs out onto the field to call timeout. And if I'm not mistaken, that's Loudon's maybe last timeout. We'll see. This timeout brought to you by Patterson's Appliances. Visit pattersonsappliances.com and check out the current cash-saving promotions. Our story starts with a promise made to the communities of East Tennessee. A promise to always look forward to the horizon and past it. A promise to help you live well. At Covenant Health, whenever you enter one of our hospitals, visit any of our physicians or talk to us on the phone, we will welcome you and your family as one of our own. Because it's about you and it's about time. Covenant Health. For every moment. Welcome back to the OEB Law Game of the Week. It'll be about third and 13 for Loudon. 26 seconds remaining in the game. Kingston went to four-man front right there. And adding the extra rusher gave them the pressure to get Scrivener off the spot and ultimately get the sack. Uh, it was a good defensive call right there. Kingston's defensive line has done a great job tonight getting to the backfield. So, third and 13. Here's Scrivener, three wide outs to his right, also an H-back that way. Takes a snap, two-step drop. He's got forever to throw. Now he's going to have to run out of the pocket. Throws it towards the end zone. That pass is incomplete. That makes it fourth and 13. We figure, I don't know, what, six, seven seconds came off the clock there. Yeah. So we got inside 20 seconds. Inside 20 seconds, fourth down. But now, yeah, now that it's fourth down, the clock isn't really as relevant. I guess Loudon can pick up a first down and then clock it again. But time, a, out. time out. Time out. Okay, so Loudon's going to take a timeout here. This timeout brought to you by Patterson's Appliances, small town appliance specialist with big box pricing and a fully stocked warehouse. Energize your home with natural gas from ORUD, your affordable energy choice. See all the ways natural gas can improve your home by visiting one of the ORUD showrooms in Oak Ridge or Kingston. New gas appliances run more efficiently. They provide hot water when you need it, precise heat control for cooking, and can dry clothes in about half the time. Comfort you can feel. Savings you can use. ORUD Natural Gas. This place is juiced, and not because Guns N' Roses was playing. It's just a great game. This could be the ball game. Fourth and 13, Loudon going for it. Just You wondered if they were going to uh, send a field goal unit out. Yeah, I had that question myself. They elect not to. Everybody's on their feet, guys. This is a big play. And Kingston on defense needs one more stop. Here's Scrivener. The throw is short. It is incomplete. Turnover on downs. Kingston is going to hold on and win this football game. Wow. And Aiden Wilkerson took a shot right there. Throws the underneath route. He would have been short of the first down anyway, uh, even if he'd caught the ball. Great defense by Kingston. Well, you can't get it any closer than that. Loud player shaking up on the play. And I've, I've mentioned this. I have never, the whole time that I've done play-by-play, -play, which I think that stretches to about 10 years now, at, at the very least, probably 15 at the most, um, I've never got to call an overtime game. And I thought maybe tonight was the night. Maybe tonight. But Loudon elects not to get the field goal. You remember in the first half, they had one come up just short before halftime. So Coach Herrig was playing for the, the first down at least. Maybe just wanted to get just a little bit closer before trying it. But with that turnover on downs, unless there is a disaster in uh, fielding the football, this game should be over. I've got 13. They've got 14. So, uh, 
Yeah, is Loudon out of timeouts? I don't think they – I think they are. 13 seconds remaining in the game. First down to Kingston. So now Gettner. This is – We've talked about this, the victory formation when you uh, snap the ball out of shotgun. Gettner just needs to take a clean snap, kneel down on it. That should be it. The Kingston Yellow Jackets in the most exciting game that we've had this year for sure, maybe in the last couple of years, on senior night. Defeat the Loudon Redskins. Oh, and we've got we've got some trouble on the field. Yeah, we got some folks wanting to mix it up. Come on, guys, that's not the way you do this. And now teams are being called to meet with their team. Some of them will finish shaking hands. The rest of them will not. But what a ball game. Tremendous ball game. The Hoot Bowl. What a game. I was looking for the trophy. I was hoping to see, was hoping to see a, a trophy given. But Kingston takes home the Jim Hoot Memorial Trophy. Kingston moves to six and one. Loudon drops to five and two. And there it is. Coach Herrig gives that trophy off to Coach Panky. And it was just <laughs> Coach Herrick just kind of walked it out there and just just gave it to Coach Panky, and then that was it. I see it now. And yeah. you see the screen. Coach Panky has it right there. The Jim Hoot Memorial Trophy. And Coach Panky holds that thing up into the air. What a football game! Tremendous, tremendous effort on both sides. You know, effort and execution. I talked about that from last night in the Clinton ball game. But you saw great effort tonight. And you saw great execution. It's, it's a shame somebody's got to lose these things. But uh, it's a great ball game. And this is a huge rebound year for Kingston. Yellow Jackets didn't make the playoffs last year. Uh, the first time that's happened uh, in Coach Panky's coaching uh, career here at Kingston for several years, ever since the second year he was here. And now look at the Jackets. This is a huge victory over the Loudon Redskins. I think also this is the first time a Coach Panky team has beat uh, Coach Herrick. That is correct. Loudon team as well. That, yeah, that is also correct. Yeah, celebration. Hard fought. You know, the, the victories that are hard fought are always the sweetest. And this one is very, very sweet for the home team. First victory for Kingston in this series since 2016. And as you alluded to, the first time Coach Panky has defeated uh, Coach Herrig coached Loudon team. So now we can tell you we didn't have to kill any time at all. None. Uh, we made it there with all the drama. Kingston celebrating. They're happy. I don't blame them. That is a huge victory for the Yellow Jackets. So we are able now. We will send it to the BBB TV 12 studios. Jonathan Cox, David Queener along with you. And they'll have the free medical clinic Friday night scoreboard show. And they'll discuss all the games going on around the area. Give them a call. Talk to them. And at the end of the night, of course, they'll also talk about that huge Tennessee South Carolina game coming up tomorrow night so be a part of that one and then uh, guys I, I don't know what else to say I just glad to be a part of this one this, this has been fun this one's been fun
So, that'll do it for our coverage here for Coach Dan Shoemaker, the cameraman and uh, the producers, which, uh, I mean, producer Brad Jones. <laughs> Kingston wins it over loud in final score 17-14. He does the job of several producers. We'll say that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kingston defeats Loudon 17-14. And uh, I don't know. We'll see you next week. So long, folks. On-site care in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of health care experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. On-site care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, on-site care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. And now on-site care welcomes Darren Wright, a board-certified family nurse practitioner practitioner who will be accepting new patients. Call 865-285-9588 to schedule an appointment at on-site care. At Rayvar Ford in Clinton, we believe in turning moments into memories. From life's milestones and growing families, Ford is there every step of the way. How about a new 2023 Ford Edge all-wheel drive ST, 42545. 2023 Ford F-150 Super Crew, 53398. 2023 Ford Escape all-wheel drive ST, 33939. Local you trust? A new Ford your family can afford. Rave Warner Ford, your East Tennessee Ford dealership. Pre-planning just it makes the the process just so much easier for the family. It relieves them of having to make some difficult decisions at, at, at a bad time. I've made arrangements. With should never lose sight of our health. To keep moving forward, let's not forget everything we've learned. Limit the salty food options. Make your own daily exercise routine and always receive regular checkups. More than anything, we have learned how important these small steps can make a big difference so we can all continue to move forward together. Ferris, we want you to get the most out of your time and end each day feeling good. That's why we pioneered exclusive lawnmower suspension technology, allowing for full speed mowing, even over the roughest terrain. Grow your business by getting more done in less time with Ferris. Ferris, work hard, feel good. Found exclusively at independent Ferris dealers. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. Daniel Forrester has been trusted by Anderson County families for nearly two decades. Daniel has appeared in Anderson County Chancery, Circuit, Sessions, and Juvenile Court thousands of times over the past decade. A Rule 31 mediator, Daniel has been trusted to mediate hundreds of cases across Anderson County. A community leader, Daniel has worked closely with local officials to make Anderson County a better place. A conservative and dedicated husband and father, Daniel's faith has shaped his character and integrity. On March 5th, vote Daniel Forrester for Anderson County Chancellor. Our story starts with a promise made to the communities of East Tennessee. A promise to always look forward to the horizon and past it. A promise to help you live well. At Covenant Health, whenever you enter one of our hospitals, visit any of our physicians or talk to us on the phone, we will welcome you and your family as one of our own. Because it's about you and it's about time. Covenant Health, for every moment.
Onsite Care in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of healthcare experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. Onsite Care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, Onsite Care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. And now Onsite Care welcomes Darren Wright, a board-certified family nurse practitioner who will be accepting new patients. Call 865-285-9588 to schedule an appointment at Onsite Care. A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach, to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one -on -one with your instructors. Together, we succeed, one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at RoanState.edu now, and let's succeed together. Pat Ryan here with Kathy Mae Martin. If you're thinking of buying or selling real estate, then make the right play call and contact Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Kathy's 30 plus years of knowledge and experience gives her clients the competitive edge. You know, like me on game day. Kick is up and it's good. Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Evans Mortuary has been serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. Football is back. And OEB Law is excited for a season full of big hits. Perfect plays. And those nail-biting near misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense and tackle any obstacles blocking you from scoring a full and fair settlement. Call OEB Law, 865-546-1111, and turn your red into a chicken. 1952, that's the year Hammers opened the first store in East Tennessee. Now there are five stores and there's always something new. Like in Hammers' popular ladies' boutique department, you'll find the lowest price possible on new arrivals every week. Find similar deals in the men's department and the expanded rug department. Plus, special purchases always offer surprise savings. You never know what you'll find next at Hammers. is back and OEB Law is excited for a season full of big hits and those nail biting near misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense. Call OEB Law and turn your red into a check. Our story starts with a promise made to the communities of East Tennessee. A promise to always look forward to the horizon and past it. A promise to help you live well. At Covenant Health, whenever you enter one of our hospitals, visit any of our physicians or talk to us on the phone, we will welcome you and your family as one of our own. Because it's about you and it's about time. Covenant Health, for every moment. A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach, to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one -on -one with your instructors. Together, we succeed, one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at RoanState.edu now, and let's succeed. 
together. Pat Ryan here with Kathy Mae Martin. If you're thinking of buying or selling real estate, then make the right play call and contact Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Kathy's 30 plus years of knowledge and experience gives her clients the competitive edge. You know, like me on game day. Kick is up and it's good. Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Make this spring all about enjoying the experience. When you ride on your new Ferris commercial mower, featuring patented suspension technology, you'll have more than freshly manicured grass. You'll experience productivity and comfort like never before. And because you won't be slowing down for those rough spots, you'll mow more lawn in less time. Ferris, experience suspension. SL Bowman & Sons, 524 North Front Street in Rockwood. On-site care in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of health care experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. On-site care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, on-site care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. And now on-site care welcomes Darren Wright, a board-certified family nurse practitioner who will be accepting new patients. Call 865-285-9588 to schedule an appointment at on-site care. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. Evans Mortuary has been serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. 1952. That's the year Hammers opened the first store in East Tennessee. Now there are five stores and there's always something new. Like in Hammers' popular ladies boutique department, you'll find the lowest price possible on new arrivals every week. Find similar deals in the men's department and the expanded rug department. Plus, special purchases always offer surprise savings. You never know what you'll find next at Hammers. Football is back, and OAB Law is excited for a season full of big hits and those nail-biting ear misses. If you've been injured, OAB Law will come to your defense. Call OAB Law and turn your rep into a check. Welcome to the Free Medical Clinic Friday Night Scoreboard. David Quinter, Jonathan Cox, glad to be with you. Uh, appreciate Free Medical Clinic being the sponsor and all of our other sponsors, too. Cox, week six. Stamp it in the books. What a week. It, it has been what that. A what a week. week of high school or not of high school football. It, it is. There's some Jefferson uh, County beats Morristown West on the last second deal where they get a touchdown and a field goal. Uh, Bearden Maryville go to overtime. Maryville goes for two in overtime to win the game uh, and gets stopped short. Uh, Loudon loses to Kingston. Loses to Kingston on a late touchdown. Yep. Uh, Alcoa, Dem Alcoa just hammers West. Uh, you shocked at that a little bit, maybe? Is, what the score? I mean, tw I think it's 20 for 24 to 7 or 27 to 7, something like that. 24 to 7, I believe. You shocked? No West more? caught Maryville. Is, is West got somebody hurt, though? Uh, here's what I think overall about West. West should have lost to Bearden, but Bearden started throwing a football. I uh, think they've got somebody hurt maybe that's pretty good. Now, I might be wrong on that, okay? Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I, I think they do. Uh, but then they caught Mayor what a good time, and then tonight, uh, I think Alcohol won a revenge. Oh, Knox Grace beats Austin East 47-40. That's a big win. There, it was 41-40 when, when I went to go pick the kids up. And uh, 
AE was driving about to score. So, huge win. Wow, York beat Oneida. York's good. York, uh, I was told York football this year has got a dominant up front line. Here's the Kenny Clinton game. What do you think about that? Jump into that real quick. I hate, I hate football being played on Thursday night. Especially That's, that it, game. That well, it's a, it's a money game. I mean, I got to ask that question tonight. I mean, you know, all the money that's full. I mean, you're already going to have a huge crowd anyway, okay? And it was, listen, packed. Probably more for that game than there was the previous weekend for Oak Ridge. As, uh, it, as I thought it would be. We packed. We talked about that. Packed, we thought it would be bigger. We did. And it was packed last night. <coughs> Standing room only. Uh, so you, you look at the money aspect, then you look at the extra money on top of it that you're getting from all the little perks and, you know, whether it's the team gets it, the cheerleaders gets it, or whoever gets it. I mean, it's, we all know, it's, you know, football's got to have, you got to have boosters and all that, and every dollar helps. So it's a money, it's just a money thing. That's all it's, it's all it is. Strictly a money thing. What about the football game? What do you think about the football game? Uh, <laughs> Good question. What I, I I'm not going to say what I really think about the football game. <laughs> well, Clinton's offense didn't. Uh, Clinton's offensive line didn't block last night. There's and then on defense. I mean, the same problems on defense has been all year long. Clinton's not able to tackle, and no penetration. Not a lot of penetration up front to uh, put any pressure on Ash Kane's quarterback. Just a few, maybe a few times out of a handful. Clinton dropped some passes last night. Uh, I'm not really worried about what happened in last night's game. What I'm worried about more than anything right now is Coach Key's son going to be able to play the next game against Lenore City that's coming up because he got hurt last night at the end of the game. Wasn't a dirty play. Uh, well, I, I've been questioned on that today a couple of times too. You, you can, I, I, I'm going to be honest, it's 50 50. And, and, but I personally, myself, I. I answered the question. I didn't think it was a dirty play. It, you know, it was a football play, and two guys fell on him. Two big guys fell on him, trying to make. And a play. you can look at it and say maybe for one of the movement on one of them, but I, I didn't think it was a dirty. I mean, no. I, I can tell you this much: Coach Keith was not happy with the play, and there wasn't no shenanigans after the game last night. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't no shenanigans from the AC side after the game last night. No. <laughs> none, none whatsoever. <laughs> no. You know, I don't know if that played into the part where Anderson County didn't score when they were down there late and could have added another touchdown. I thought that was a classy move. Uh, yeah, it, you can consider it classy or whatever, but the, they didn't want, I don't think they wanted to get that, uh, they didn't want to wake that giant man up any more than he was already woke up. Yeah. Because he thought it was a dirty play. That's his son, and I, I understand that. I understand that, but uh, I, actually I didn't think, think it was a dirty play. I don't either. And I actually think from knowing a little bit about the situation after the game last night, um, I think he realized and was told as the game was ending, you know, it was just his son trying to move forward. And I, th I, th I think that's what happened. Here's what I'd like to see happen in high school football. we got to find some way to cut the jawing out, Okay. We got to find some way to cut the tomfoolery out. If that means throwing 150 flags and ejecting 20 players, let's do it. Why should the cut, officials have to cut the jaw out? That's well, the fault. It, it, it ain't going. Somebody's got to police it. So you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand. And I agree with you 100. But somebody's got to cut the jaw out and all the tomfoolery that's going on with it. And once you start throwing kids out, and once you start throwing your studs out. <coughs> They got to set the next week, and the same thing happens when they do come back. Then you'll cut some of the tomfoolery out. You'll cut the jawing out. You know, I was raised, you play the game, and the winner wins, and uh, you go home, and if you're a loser, yeah, you're ticked about it, but there's next year, and that's how you do it. You know, this, I'm, I'm not, I'm just old school, I guess, man. I'm just... I'm over the Kids. I'm over the Tom I'm over the Tom I'm over the trash talking tomfoolery and I don't care who wants to call and say you're wrong, it's part of the game. It's not part of the game of football that I know and I like, okay? It's not part of it. I'm sorry. Kids will do what they can get away with. Yeah, that's exa exactly right. So if the officials step up a little bit, then it'll put pressure on the coaches. I agree, it should be the coaches. 
but because there's so much pressure on high school coaches today to win, they've got to keep those kids out there. They can't pull them over there because then you'll have the situation that we got going on down the road down in Sweetwater. Some of that situation going on. And I could see it going up. You start yanking some, these kids' parent, parents start on. You don't want that. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know how you stop it. I, I really don't. Other than that, I thought it was a really good game. Yeah, I thought okay. Aaron, I thought Aaron Skane dominated the football game. I'm not saying they didn't dominate the football game. I thought Clinton held their own for a little while, but you know you can only do so much. They you were know? outmanned up front. Oh, most definitely outmanned up front. But I, yeah. across the board, across the board on the offense, on across the board on the offense, across the board on the defensive side, the run, uh, the Moog kid is just fun, is a phenomenal running back. Uh, but uh, Clinton couldn't tackle him. I mean, when you, your first contact you make with him and he gains 20 more yards, you know, you, you, you've got to, you know, football is a, t this is not flag, this is tackle football. You have to wrap up and put a helmet on somebody, and we didn't do that last night, and you're right, Clinton didn't deserve to win last night. Do you think there's... But I'm glad to see him playing again. Yeah, they need to play. It, was, a, it was calm, cool, and collective afterwards. And that's a, that's a good sign. Uh, the kids settled it on the field, not the adults in the stands. Well, I think at the end of the day, if, if, if they don't know how to act after the game, that's why they're not playing. That's why they're originally why they didn't play. Well, yeah. I mean, a little with, bit. Some, with, up, with some other with some other factors yeah, there. But that was that was an excuse used. <laughs> no, it wasn't an excuse. It was what that's what there was going to be somebody get seriously hurt if they yeah. had to stop the series. Uh, but I'm saying, you know, that that's what you. Were I'm being glad told. Coach Keith brought it back and put it back on the schedule. I know why he took it off the schedule. I know what I was told, and I supported him doing what he done. It was not well liked in the community, but still, yet there was going to be somebody get hurt, and then is what would happen from some consequences? Would that be worth over a high school football game? And me, the answer would be no. Let our young men decide the game on the field and the fans just cheer it on, win or lose, man. It's going to happen every Friday night. Cox, somebody's going to win, somebody's going to lose. And you know, you're going to be happy sometimes and I'm going to be happy sometimes. But ain't nobody likes to lose. You <coughs> show me a loser. I don't want to be around him. Nobody likes losing. It's not a funny, it's not a good feeling. I, you know, so, but man, it was a so-so game last night. It was entertaining for a half anyway. It was entertaining. I didn't get to see the first half. Uh, then once I realized it was kind of competitive, I turned it on and watched a little bit on Diamond Clear uh, for a few minutes. But I honestly, I think Anderson County and Clinton can play that game ten times. I think Anderson County wins it ten times. Probably. I won't, I won't disagree with you. Uh, but Clinton just – I've been wondering why they hadn't can't win a that big game and get over that hump. And after I watched last night, I know why. And I don't know a ton about football, but you better be good, no matter how talented you are. You better be good fundamentally in any sport you, you play. You know, uh, our, one of our favorite callers that calls in every week uh, thinks about all the expectations in Clinton. You know, I I didn't hear that much about that this summer, I, so I don't have any idea. You know, I I thought Clinton would be a pretty good football team this year. I wasn't looking at no nine and one or ten and zero oh or even eight and two. I, th I thought there would be a stretch. And me and you've talked about this. And my, I got a good friend. Me and him talked about it. We talked about that three game stretch with Powell, Oak Ridge, and Anderson County. Could we get one? Could we just get one of those games? It really didn't matter which one it was. Could we get one of them? To me, I thought the most important game out of that three game stretch. Forget the other two the games that I'm not going to mention was Oak Ridge, Oak Ridge. because it's a region game, yep. okay? But I knew the hype would be for last night's game, though. And, I, you know, but Oak Ridge was a game Clinton needed to win. That's that's yep. for the – could have possibly been for the region championship. Absolutely. Then, you you know, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what happened in the Powell game and the Anderson County game. You want to – you've got to – you know, this coming up Friday night, I think it's Clinton and the North City. That game is so important. That's a home field playoff game. Absolutely. More than likely, if Clinton beats the North City, then all they got to do is take <coughs> care of Carnes yep. with Heritage left on the schedule, which is a non-region game. Clinton's got to win two games coming up, a North City and Carnes. 
left on the schedule and they're, with Harrod. They're going to beat and Collins. Then, and then they're going to be in a, then they're going to have a home field playoff game. That's that's a while it's, that that's happened. So, you know, great schedule. I just wouldn't have had Powell, Oak Ridge, and, and Harris County back to back to back. I agree. I'd played Oak Ridge first game of the year. I'd played Aaron's Kane first. I'd played Aaron's Kane first game of the year. One of them, one of the but two. But I don't think Aaron's Kane's willing to give up Powell for week one. That's been, that's become a big first week game. That's a, that's become a big game, and yeah. you know it goes back to my opening statement when we talked about the game. It's a money game. It's a big game because Powell's short distance up seventy five up to one twenty two. They're going to travel well. They travel well. It's like Anderson County last night. Come down the Boulevard. I don't know how many miles it is, but a short trip over the bridge into Clinton last night brought a huge crowd. So those are just money games, and I, I wish it had been played. If it had been played tonight, the crowd might have even been bigger it than been. it would have been last night. Because some of those people stayed home and watched that game on TV last I night. I mean, I would have went up there tonight. So, But, you know, Thursday night, you got kids' activities and things going on, and, you know, it's kind of hard. To be at a Thursday night football so, game. So I mean that's you know Clinton's got a Clinton's got a lot of work. Clinton's got a lot of work to do, and you could say a lot of work in week six, going into week seven. Yes, Clinton's got a, a lot. lot of work to do. They need to shore the offensive line up. I don't know what they I don't know what they got to do. Got some big boys up front, but they got to shore that offensive line up, and we got to get a little defensive pressure. So uh, there's still plenty of time left for Clinton to get a little better. And, and see what can happen in the playoffs. Because you know, you never know what happens in the playoffs. A turnover here, a fumble there, or something like that, you now, never know. I, I'll go as far as that. I think both teams have a long a long way to go. So, well, I don't know. Aaron's can look pretty good last night, Cox. I don't know. I think they. I think when you start going up against the Greenville and the Elizabethans of the world, you're going to have to be, you're going to, have to be able to throw the football Well, that's, that's, always their, that's always been the case anyway for AC to have to beat Greenville and have to beat Elizabethan and, and who all that. I, I think the road to to uh, Chattanooga for Harris County is a really difficult one. I think it might be more difficult for them this year than it was last year. Oh, for sure. For sure, just talent-wise and everything. Yeah, no, you're right. Quick call, are you on the air? Uh, yes, uh, I just uh, wondered what you guys thought about the uh, Alcoa West game today. You know, I was I talked to a guy yesterday about that, and I told him I thought Alcoa might beat him by two touchdowns. I think it ended up being worse than that. Um, I Twenty-four think, to seven. Yeah, I think Al okay. There you go. I think Alcoa is a better football team. I think Alcoa has got better quarterback play, um, and I think the West Rebels are really good, uh, but I think Bearden should have beat them, but Bearden started throwing the football that day, and West, uh, you know, Alcoa had the recipe. I, no, I'm not shocked. I thought Alcoa would win that football game. I thought they'd win by a couple touchdowns. Yeah, I thought it yeah. might be a little closer. Yeah. Uh, in the Bearden-Merrillville uh, game, I heard that Merrillville went for uh, two points in the overtime. They did. They didn't make it. Ended up 21 to 20. Is that what you heard? Yep, absolutely. I actually talked to the quarterback's dad on the way here. He's a friend of ours. Um, they were driving late in the game. Maryville was to take the uh, to get set up a field goal for the game winning field goal. Snapped the ball. Uh, they were doing. They were audible on third and about eight, and center snapped the ball. Ended up having to punt. Bearden drives the ball down the field after a long punt return. Drives the ball the rest of the way down the field, sets up a game winning field goal, and misses it. Bearden gets yeah, the ball uh, first. Must have been a really good game. Yeah, Bearden gets um, the ball first in overtime, scores, kicks the extra point. Maryville yeah. gets the ball in overtime and uh, tries to run it on a heavy set and, and doesn't get a yard. Right. Yeah. Uh, a little bit about Oliver Springs. They won real big again uh, tonight. I think they're on a little bit of a roll. Uh, I know the district's kind of weak, except for maybe Cofield. But uh, Oliver Springs playing pretty good ball right now. What do you guys think? They are. That game, that Cofield game's coming up in a few weeks. You'll see it in a few weeks, and we'll find out. We'll find yeah. out a lot about Oliver Springs after that football game. Yeah, I got Cofield and uh, Whitwell. I don't know how good Whitwell is, but I'd say they're pretty good. Yeah. Hey, caller, do you have a score for Harriman? I don't think we could find a score for Harriman for. I never seen a score on Harriman all night. Hold on, I think we've got it. What? Who who won? Oh, good, Harriman won. Harriman won forty six twenty. Good deal. Good deal. Twenty six to twenty. 
46 to 20. 46 to 20. Yeah. That was uh, Telecom Pines, right? Uh, yes, I believe yes, so. Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I don't know what you guys know about York Institute, but I've noticed they, uh, they're playing awfully good ball <coughs> this year. They're uh, undefeated. <laughs> they beat Oneida pretty bad tonight, 28 to nothing, I believe. Yeah, That's Grace, correct. Grace went down there uh, Saturday, the second week of the season, played Saturday, and their coach, Justin Long, said that they are big, they run the wing tee, and uh, they were a really good high school football team. Yeah, they must be. Uh, they're double A, right? I don't know if they're 2A or 3A. There's so many A's this day and time, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. I'd have to look that up. I watched a little bit of that game tonight on the old night of YouTube channel, and uh, they uh, – their quarterback runs the ball quite a bit, and they've got a pretty good uh, running attack, and uh, they must be pretty good. Yeah, that's what it. That was the report that we got. Yeah. Well, okay, guys, have a good night. All right, thanks, man. I seen. I was looking to see if uh, if I've been watching, see if I seen Lenore City. I just seen it come up. Looks like Lenore City beat Morristown East. I don't know nothing about East, and I don't know what kind of opponent they are. Uh, looks like they beat them. Clinton's got a big game. They need they need the quarterback to be healthy, and they need to win that. Oh football game. yes, is that at Lenore City? Uh, it's a good question. I, th I don't. Yes, I think last year was at Clinton. Okay, I think I'm right. Then that. Yeah. I don't know if that matters after the rescheduling went out for yeah, the next two know. years. So I'm not for sure. Yeah, Hall's back on the winning track tonight. Greenville rolling big. Rockwood beats Greenback. Greenback. Fell on hard times, Over big time. Over the last time. eight, six, eight years, big time. Well, you know, they go through coaching change after coaching change after coaching change, and when that happens, that's not good. So uh, uh, I have noticed, you know, some names you see on down, <coughs> excuse me, towards middle as far as Ray County and Udawal and all those, they're not having very good years no. this year. <coughs> excuse me. No, William. not – not. it's going to be East Tennessee dominant again, which is kind of scary because East Tennessee football is not that good this year. North City game is at La North City, I just got okay. told. That's what – I'm wondering for sure, but it's what I thought. So, thanks for telling me that. I think the Somebody Carnes – Somebody out there. Clint's going to make the playoffs. <coughs> They're going to beat Carnes. But the year oh, like, – They're already in the playoffs. Yeah, that, that win next week. Is going to be whether they need play to have or. that win in order to wrap up number two, yeah. the number two position. So wrap wrap it up with a North City win, a Carnes win, and a Heritage win. Five and five. Home and field advantage. Home, home, well, it's two seed in the playoffs. Number two in the play. Number two seed in the re coming out. Uh, get a home playoff game. Have a chance. You, at least, you know, playing at home always gives you a little bit better chance. And going on the road depends on how far the bus ride is that you got to go. So. Uh, uh, it, it should be interesting. I hope, I, I'm just I'm hoping the quarterback. Quick question for you: Asked, did the injury last night to the quarterback was that he got his breath knocked out of him, or is that a rib injury? Well, I'm not 100 percent sure on that, but the way it looked like to me, where he fell on the ball, I'm, I'm not sure it's not from the ball injuring the ribs. Probably, I don't know. I've not heard the status actually on the. Thing and he was in so much pain last night for, from what I could see on TV. I'm thinking we got some type of possibly a, whether it's just a bruised rib or whether it's a broke rib or something. You know, he looked like he was in a lot of discomfort and he was holding that side area where the ribs would be. So I'm thinking it's a football. After falling on a football is, is what happened. Do they have enough design runs for him just to keep everybody honest? Uh, he run the ball quite a bit last night. Design run. Well, I don't know about that. I don't know nothing about their offense. See, I, I watched a little bit of the second half, and they I, it looked like to me they had one design run, and he ran for 40 yards. Yeah, he does. Uh, he runs the ball. Some They do a quarterback draw with him sometimes. I know I've seen that a couple times this year, yeah. and it's it's been some pretty – he's got some pretty good wheels on him. Uh, he, he should be running. And Clinton's running game last night was not really – they really didn't have a, you know. That game was one a, in that box. I asked, I asked a guy like this morning, what's the deal with Goins? He's always slipping and falling on the turf. I don't know if it's his 
the type of cleats he's wearing. I don't know what it is. I mean, it's not just at Clinton he's, that's happening to him. That's, that's, yeah. that's happening That's happening. everywhere. So we need to change, maybe change his shoes up a little bit or something maybe. But uh, that's part of it. So we'll roll on. Clinton's got a great opportunity next Friday night to, to take care of business. And uh, so. Powell's 5A, but they're not in the same region. Powell's in a different region. Powell's over there with, you know, Powell and West have still got to play. I think that's a region game, Powell and West. It is. So Powell's over there with West and whoever else gotcha. is on that side. I don't know who all's on that side. So uh, gotcha. uh, Clinton's on this side. I think Clinton's on the, the as far as having the teams to play. The Campbell County. The Campbell County, and those it's, yeah. it's the better side to be on in my book anyway. Is that uh, Powell, West, Central? Oak Ridge Manahan on Central tonight. Yeah. I mean, literally. And uh, the running back, Dozier, I don't know that he didn't have another 190 yard night tonight. He had 160 or 175 at one point tonight. And I think he reeled off a 25 yard run there late, I think. Rockwood's having a tough year. Yeah, Rockwood's had a tough year. They have. See, Carter bounces back tonight, beat a. Uh, Northview Academy team that was undefeated. Sweetwater lost the change of quarterback and didn't help him much, did it? No, coach didn't help that much. Yep. It's scary when parents start running schools and athletic programs. Yep. That's what I mean. That's I'm what glad I'm saying. You, you bet. I'm, I'm glad we got off the topic of the the way the kids act. I was about to get. I was. I was going to get fired up on that. It's a little crazy, man. Yeah. It's enough to get you fired up when you see it. Yeah. Because so, it, uh, it's a direct reflection of the coach. Oh, and you want to say something else that's a direct reflection of not having discipline? That's from coaching, too. I mean, when you get penalties. It's a, dec it, it's a direct and, and you, reflection. You know what? I bet you money. I'll, I'll bet money. I'll bet you some money on this, okay? I bet we can line 50 coaches up at the front door up here and bring them all in. They'd all, every one of them would tell you penalties are killers. They hate him. They they stress it every week. We got to cut. I, I guarantee you they they talk about it every. I bet you, I bet it's the first conversation every week about penalties. I would be willing to bet money on that because those penalties are killers. Yeah. They just you know Oak Ridge got penalized tonight. It was third and third and goal from the 32 yard line. Just penalty after penalty after penalty. And those penalties will. When you're playing a really good football team, they will come back to haunt you. I mean, my son plays nine, <coughs> nine and ten year old football, and they were jumping off sides and stuff early in the year. And coaches said, "This is pretty simple. I'm gonna keep up with how many penalties we have for every penalty we have when we get here. You know, we've got a down and back on a 40. And then they go to practice, and they something happens, <coughs> they run. Well, you know, you figure out, stop doing it. I mean, it's it's. You know, it's just focus. To me, it sounds real simple to take care of, but I guess yeah. it's not. So you see it's it every week. It's a matter so. of focus. But it, our, our coach is so worried about getting transfers in and keeping kids happy and having to to be worried about, I got to get this kid, I got to get that kid, I got to get this kid nowadays because if not, they're going to go here, they're going to go there, that they can't hold people accountable. I think so. I'll tell you a story in a minute. I mean, seriously, uh, is that is that where we are? Yeah, we can't I, hold kids accountable because we're worried about losing them to other places? Yep. Yep. It's a sad day. Yep. Quick call, are you on the air? Yes, sir. How you doing tonight, Mr. Queener? Doing good. Good, good. A lot of good ball games tonight, huh? He forget my name? He did. Hey, huh? you finally you you finally get over at Tennessee loss? Tennessee lost. Yeah, well, you know. Oh, no, no. We, yeah, you got to. You, I told Cox, I said, <coughs> I don't believe it. I, you know, I told him I'd call him on Sunday after the game. You so sick. I didn't call you till Monday. I give you time to recoup after. Oh, uh, no. We, we, so, we, I'll, we, I'll call you this Sunday, too, after the Tennessee Davidson, game. Maybe you won't be sick. Uh, Davidson Academy goes down tonight. They're, they uh, they play another 6-0 team, Franklin Road Academy. And uh, Franklin Road Academy and CPA probably be the two top teams. Webb would have to play down there uh, in, in the in the playoffs somewhere. So, uh, what was the score? Uh, thirty-four to uh, thirty-four to thirteen. Wow. 
Were you so, there? Did you go? Yeah. So, big time, big time. Uh, it, it's, uh, you know, got to bounce back now, though. Got to bounce back. You going to game uh, tomorrow? Uh, probably not. Probably not. Brad and, Brad and Eli and them are, are going, so I get to stay home, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll be uh it'll be uh it'll be a big win tomorrow night. Uh, you think so? Back. That'll help the offensive line to get get you know that'll that'll help the offensive line and that's Mays back for sure. Yeah, and we gotta run the ball. We gotta run the ball. Uh, yeah, no wait a minute, how you yeah, know Mays? We got some people we got some people in our offensive line, guys, that, that really that really shouldn't be playing SEC football. I mean we they're they're not they're not very good. How do you know Mays is going to be back? I've said that for the last two weeks and he's not I back. I didn't say that. I said, next, you know, I said, the, the doctors, you know, that he just he could have played last week, but the doctor, you know, holding him out. We're good now, though. We're good. Okay. So you're telling me you think he could have – hold on. Hold on. So you think – are you telling me you think Mays was released last week and didn't play a quarter or 20 snaps just to get ready no, for this no. week? That's what I'm saying is I don't – I think he, he thought he could play, but I don't think the doctors were going to release him. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. I yeah, I think he, I think he felt like he could play, but. but well, I, I I don't really think it matters if Mays plays tomorrow night or not. Okay, here's well, why. I think, I think it's huge. I think it's huge. Well, it could be huge. I, I'll give you that. For the offense, it is uh, huge. I, but what your reason is? My reason is it is what's a quarterback going? Is which Rattler. Which quarterback? Well, not only Rattler, but which court, Tennessee quarterback are we going to get? Are we going to get the one that can do what he did this past week against that team? Or are we going to get the one that lays the eggs? So I think that's that's what we need to because we don't have no consistency there out of our court. Yeah, we have consistency. He's either really good or really bad. Well, and I think too. I think the the, the real question is. You know, where was where was your best running back against Florida? Who's your best running back? I think Sampson was the best part of the best. Yeah, I do too. Did he carry? He didn't carry the ball last week, any did he? Last week? Yeah. Yeah, he carried it last week. He scored about two or three touchdowns. I didn't think he. I didn't think he carried. I thought I heard him talking about that they'd have to. He'd have to carry the ball this week. He didn't carry it any last week. Uh, I might have misunderstood. That's what I'm saying. The week before he didn't play. That's that's what I'm saying. Is why didn't he play? Uh, that's a good question. That's oh, a good question. I'll call Josh and find out. Yeah, that's a good question because uh, I mean he comes in <laughs> last week and I mean he's he's I think he's a difference maker. I, I just think I just think it, we really it, our weaknesses in the offensive line really show. I think I think it really hurts us. Did you hear what I said? No, I didn't hear. I said I'll call Josh and find out about it. I, I'll get you an answer. Cleaner's got his cell phone number. I got his cell phone number. I met, well, I met him this morning at Hardy's and had a sausage biscuit with him, so we'll see. Who, who was that with? Josh. Well, no, nah, he doesn't need it at Hardy's. Yeah, he does. He does when he meets me. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't have it. Yeah, he met me there at Hardy's this morning right over on Clinton Avenue. He doesn't have a contract with Hardy's. Yeah, he, well, I got a contract with him. Oh, Here's what you don't understand, Barry. I have a contract with Hardy's. Not him. I do. No. I have an ideal. With Hardy's. In ideal. <laughs> yeah, in ideal. Yeah, in yeah, ideal. Ideal for me to eat at Hardy's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you ain't right, man. Hey, I see you where. Do. You probably do have an in ideal. I do. I see where Coach. Not I see not where. Included. That's I, what it stands for. Not included. Not included. I see where Coach Webb pulled himself up off the ground tonight and finally won a game. Who did? Coach Webb. Yeah, yeah, he, uh, Greenback, you know, Greenback's not the Greenback, you know. Uh, you know, Greenback's a whole lot like Sunbright. Do you remember back when Sunbright would either go 0-10 or 10-0? Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it, <laughs> it, was the, it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. And Greenback's a whole lot like that now, but, but, but uh, you know, they've had a lot of coaching changes, so. Yep, and then Harriman gets off the snot tonight. Coach Tapp gets a win this year, too, also, so. At homecoming too. That's why well, everybody's happy then at homecoming. If you get a win on homecoming. Well, yeah, homecoming, really Harriman, homecoming, side. Rockwood. So yeah. big, big, uh, big games tonight. Well, I was glad to see Coach Webb win tonight. Maybe the people down in Rockwood quit calling me about him in. So good. there's evidently a good game in Kingston tonight. Oh, it was fine. Yeah, I watched the last part of it here. Big uh, game. Loudon scores late to go ahead, fourteen to ten, and Kingston scores really late to go back on top, seventeen fourteen. And then Loudon just couldn't finish. Loudon made a deep drive, but they just couldn't connect on a fourth down play to, to get where they needed to get. And then time 
There went but just a, a few seconds left. See, that, that's the Coach Gibson Award. So that goes. Yep, uh, uh, Coach Panky had the trophy tonight in his hand and uh, yeah, was yeah, walking it, with it. I seen it. I seen it. Yeah, that sure turned did. out to be a that turned out to be a really nice uh, a little rivalry there over the over the Coach Gibson Trophy. Yeah, looks like a, it was a really good ball game tonight. I mean, it's seven seven for a long time tonight, so it was a really good game. Well, so now what's what's the story on Prime now? What's going to happen there now? That's not the big ball game. That's, Co that's Cox's out. man. I mean, he's all uh, you know. That's all he talks about. He wants to text me in the weekends talking about Prime, Prime. Yeah, I sent him a text and said, how about ducks. your boy Prime with listen, a duck in there? Listen, he's already won more games than they've won in the last two years. So, so what's you have the big a, deal? You have a, you have a, you have the insight with him, too? I don't have no insight with him. Just Cox Josh. does. I just have it with Josh, but I don't have it with Prime. I, they probably get beat tomorrow night as bad as they did last week. Well, they're going up against another good team that, that you know, their pass defense is terrible. So, you're right, and they don't have much of a pass rush up front. So, they're, they're liable to be rough again. Could be. Josh, Josh uh, how about uh, uh, our, our man Stallings? How's he doing? He's doing pretty good. I'd say he's sitting at home right now thinking, what in the world is USA doing the Ryder Cup? But he's doing oh good. Oh, my gosh. He's got his full status back. He'll be out there, uh, I guess, in a couple weeks going back at it. But, uh, yep, he's had a good career, and uh, he's just plugging a lot of right along, just getting back in the grind, I'd say, next week, I think, is when he starts back up. Good, good, yep. good. Yeah. Well, you, you guys have a good one. Uh, I, I know, uh, you know, a lot of football to be played tomorrow, so uh, I, think, uh, I think Tennessee probably gets back on the winning ways tomorrow night. And, and uh, I think defensively, we just got to put pressure on on uh, on, on Rattler, and we've got to, our, our our linebackers got to play better. That's that's what killed us last year. If you remember, we didn't have any linebackers play at all. No, we'll see no. if your you're linebacker right or not. your li your linebacker was back home. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And and obviously there was more than just linebacker problems. I mean, that was there was something on that team that happened that. That, that I don't guess we'll, ever, we'll, we'll know about. But, uh, Jealousy. Uh, when you have to count on people that are not dependable, it's hard to win at a high level on a consistent basis. You're, you're exactly right. I think one thing one thing that I've been a little bit disappointed in is, is that we don't get Rico some snaps just in a meaningful way in, a, in the second quarter or something. I don't mean to play him, you know, just but, but put him in there and let him play a meaningful series or two just so that he gets the speed of the game at a, at a meaningful time. I think they're trying to save his time so they don't lose a year of eligibility so he, they can uh, keep they, him. They're not going that. that he ain't going yeah. redshirt. He, he's, not going to, he's not worried about it. He's not going to redshirt. He might not redshirt. He might not have to, but if he don't play the amount of time, he won't burn a year up, and I think that's why you've not uh, seen him like you're wanting. He's not going to burn that $8 million he's got up either, though. Well, so I, I think we see what happens here. I don't – you know, all you got to do is listen to the coaches – when the game at Tennessee lost, they said it w at far it would not have made any difference who we'd have played at quarterback. The same well, result would have happened. I'm not saying it would make a difference. I'm just saying I, I just think you need to get him some snaps in a meaningful situation just so when, when that time does come, he, he at least has had a couple of snaps. Well, maybe so. We'll he, got a, he got a few snaps last week. Well, but, but it's, you know, it's with two minutes left. Well, a lot he, of difference that, in, that's in valuable the time. He got a few snaps. Minutes, he got a few snaps. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate it. I'll call you. Joe, have, have a great time. All right, see you, man. See you, buddy. See you, buddy. All right, let's take a break. We'll be back here in just a few minutes on the Free Miracle Clinic Friday Night Scoreboard. Football is back. <laughs> and OEB Law is excited for a season full of big hits. Perfect plays. And those nail-biting near misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense and tackle any obstacles blocking you from scoring a full and fair settlement. Call OEB Law, 865-546-1111, and turn your wreck into a check. We should never lose sight of our health. To keep moving forward, let's not forget everything we've learned. Limit the salty food options. Make your own daily exercise routine. And always receive regular checkups. 
More than anything, we have learned how important these small steps can make a big difference so we can all continue to move forward together. Here we go, Billy, swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. Evans Mortuary has been serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. Make this spring all about enjoying the experience. When you ride on your new Ferris commercial mower featuring patented suspension technology, you'll have more than freshly manicured grass. You'll experience productivity and comfort like never before. And because you won't be slowing down for those rough spots, you'll mow more lawn in less time. Ferris, experience suspension. Your local Ferris dealer is SL Bowman & Sons, 524 North Front Street in Rockwood. Call 865-354-0600. Daniel Forrester has been trusted by Anderson County families for nearly two decades. Daniel has appeared in Anderson County Chancery, Circuit, Sessions, and Juvenile Court thousands of times over the past decade. A Rule 31 mediator, Daniel has been trusted to mediate hundreds of cases across Anderson County. A community leader, Daniel has worked closely with local officials to make Anderson County a better place. A conservative and dedicated husband and father, Daniel's faith has shaped his character and integrity. On March 5th, vote Daniel Forrester for Anderson County Chancellor. Our story starts with a promise made to the communities of East Tennessee. A promise to always look forward to the horizon and past it. A promise to help you live well. At Covenant Health, whenever you enter one of our hospitals, visit any of our physicians, or talk to us on the phone, we will welcome you and your family as one of our own. Because it's about you, and it's about time. Covenant Health, for every moment. Pat Ryan here with Kathy Mae Martin. If you're thinking of buying or selling real estate, then make the right play call and contact Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Kathy's 30 plus years of knowledge and experience gives her clients the competitive edge. You know, like me on game day. Kick is up and it's good. Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Onsite Care in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of healthcare experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. Onsite Care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, Onsite Care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. And now Onsite Care welcomes Darren Wright, a board certified family nurse practitioner who will be accepting new patients. Call 865 285 9588 to schedule an appointment at Onsite Care. A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one -on -one with your instructors. Together, we succeed one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at roanstate.edu now, and let's succeed together. 1952, that's the year Hammers opened the first store in East Tennessee. Now there are five stores and there's always something new. Like in Hammers' popular ladies boutique department, you'll find the lowest price possible on new arrivals every week. Find similar deals in the men's department and the expanded rug department. Plus, special purchases always offer surprise savings. You never know what you'll find next at Hammers. Welcome back to the Free Medical Clinic Friday Night School. Well, folks, if you need if you need to see a doctor, go to the Free Medical Clinic and check them out. No cost. They'll, they'll, they'll help you out. 
guarantee you they will help you out. So check the free medical clinic out, uh, and uh, if, if you need some uh, if you need some medical stuff, don't go without seeing a doctor. Okay, there's an opportunity to do that right here. Let's get this call. Been holding. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Yes, I didn't see the early part of your show. You may have already covered this, but the Clinton quarterback was injured last night. Do you have an update on his status? No, we've not uh, we've not had an update on him, uh, so I, I do not know. Okay, thank you very much. All right, thanks. I don't even know what's hurt. I don't even know what's injured. Well, ribs, I'm saying I'm saying we got something to the chest area, so okay. I, I, that's from the view of the TV. It could be his leg, as far as I know, or his ankle. I, I don't know that. So, it to me, it looked like he was in pain from here. Yeah, for sure. For, for sure. So, I mean, I'm yeah. going to say that's part of the problem. There could be something else. So. I don't know uh, uh, what the injury uh, injury status was, so uh, but uh, I just hope he's better. I hope he gets to play Friday night against yeah, North City. Clinton really needs him. He's a phenomenal young man. He's a really good athlete. Uh, you know, he's took listen, Cox. He's took a beating this year, man. He took some hits and he gets up just about every time. And he's just good. He's a good kid from from what I hear. He's a real good kid. So. Uh, We'll see. We'll see what happens. I don't even know who Clinton's second string quarterback is. I don't even know if I got one. I goes to show. You. I mean, I, I'm being serious as a heart attack right now. I don't have a clue who it is. Well, hopefully he can play. So hopefully he can play, and we won't have to worry about that. They we'll need talk, to win that next Friday match. night. We'll talk about Clinton beating the North City and yep. and seeding things up. So let's move on. Uh, but if anybody's got an update on him that wants to do it, and I understand if you don't want to, if somebody doesn't know for sure, and it's you don't want to tell on it, I understand that too. But back to uh, you, did I understand you right? Bearden Maryville goes in overtime. Bearden scores first, kicks extra point. Maryville scores, goes for two, and fails. That's, That's correct? correct. Okay. Yeah. Does that score, I asked you about Alcohol West, does that score shock you? I thought it'd be a really good game. Uh, I think you always just think Maryville's going to find a way to win. We've been That's why it's hard to pick against them. Yeah, we've been spoiled with that. But, I mean, 14-14 into overtime, you know, I think it's – Do you think – I would I would not pick against Maryville playing Beard in the, in the postseason. Let me ask you this. Okay. I've listened to the coach uh, talk about, the, you know, I know he's had some injuries. I know some of them have been, well, I think the starting quarterback, a running back, and I know his – talk has been next man up mentality but do you think Maryville's dominance is slowly but surely coming to an end and it's just going to be another regular football team a no. team that'll win you know six seven eight games a year and, but their dominance where they make another long playoff run and win some state championships again their dominance is over they're they're not a regular football team but their dominance is over. They're way above. They're above average. They're above average. Yeah, they're above average. I mean, you look at the the schedule they play, and you look at who they play, and they're starting a freshman quarterback. The freshman class is really good. The sophomore class is really good. The senior class, not as good as they've had in the past. Uh, they've starting running back, best player, best athlete on the team, broke his foot. Early in the first game of the season, yeah. there's a lot to win against them. But now, I'd say this: if the old boy comes back week nine like they're thinking, and the freshman quarterback's got some experience under his, you know, under his belt, there, I would say it's a team that no one outside of Oakland wants to play. So, you asked me a question earlier, and I said I would answer about a conversation I had this morning. About kids transferring everywhere, transferring in here, yes. transferring there. I was talking to a guy this morning. I was at, a, I was at a, a funeral service this morning, and I was talking to a guy that I know that was there, and we were talking. I told him last night, I said, well, can't cheat it last night. And he said, okay. He said, no, I don't think they did. And I said, I'm only kidding. And we was talking about that, and he said, you know, all the transfers, the transfers at AC, the transfers at Clinton, Yep. It's not the same, you know, like knowing every kid out there. You don't know every kid out there anymore just because of all the transfers that are coming in and that's happening. So, uh, you know, that is become a, that's become a thing now if you're, you know, transfers. Yeah. It's become a bit, can turn your program, 
can turn your program around quickly. You've already seen that with Colorado. I mean, they won three games because of it. Don't know that they'll win another one the rest of the year, but they won three. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, but the thing about it is in the, in the NCAA, they have opened up the transfer portal and they have created their own monster. Like it's something they they have okayed. With the high school situation, um, it's very easy for a kid to transfer, uh, but it's it's not you know it's it's not encouraged by TWS play. I mean, the transfer portal was encouraged by the NCAA. The the transfer, the, I, and I've said it, I've made a joke about it all year, about certain teams having better years in the transfer portal than others in high school sports. When it, it's for real. You want to know how a Bearden beats a Maryville for the first time in 18 years after a guy's taken over the program two times? Because he's had 38 transfers in two years. So let me ask let me ask this: How does a how does a high school program like that get thirty eight kids to transfer in? Well, and, and I use that number because I know that's a safe number. I have been told that they have a total of fifty one kids that have transferred in to play football at Bearden High School in two years. Well, how does that happen? I mean, how how's it happening? Is it the coach? Is it one group of parents somewhere dragging what? dragging all these? dragging a, a bunch of team a bunch of kids together are you getting 10 or 12 that are together coming and then you get all these and then everybody hears about it and we all decide we're going to go to Bearden all at once yeah you know and I understand why Mayor of Alcoa might get a transfer they're proven winners they have state yeah. championships they're proven winners Bearden for the last 15 years has been you know, uh, not even a topic of conversation. Mediocre football team. I mean, For, uh, that. Yeah. So, yeah, I, mean, I know I agree with you. Two years ago, three years ago, they lost to a Fulton football team at Bearden that was not real good. And they got 1,800, 2,000 students over there. But you can't change a program that was no good to beating Maryville in two years without 30-plus transfers. I don't care if you bring in, you know, spur your saving. It don't matter. I mean, you can do all the X's and O's you want to. Did, you got to have some Jimmys and Joes. Didn't uh, we speaking of Jimmys and Joes? Didn't Bearden get some big running back in this year? He's hurt right From now. Or he was. That's going to Purdue. Yeah, he's he's hurt right. Supposedly he's hurt right. Yeah. Not supposedly he is hurt right now. I think. Yeah. I mean, it's like it, and I'll go back two years ago. Out Powell wins state championship. How does a kid from Memphis, Tennessee, end up at Powell High School? That's a five-star, number one rated defensive tackle in the country. I live in Powell. There's nothing. It's not like it's a thriving metropolis <laughs> that everybody heard, wants to move into. I heard that. I mean, I don't think they moved in for the Bojangles or the Panther Dojo over there. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not like it's, we're talking about a thriving metropolis, uh, you know, that you move from Memphis there. If you come from Memphis and you're coming to Knoxville to play football, your first stop is Maryville Alcoa. Well, I would think it would be anyway. You know, and, and, then it's, and then it's probably Catholic. Yeah. You know. Web. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's according to yeah. what you want. According to what you want. Yeah, according to what you want. But, yeah, the, the the transfer thing is becoming a major issue. And I think, to me, my question would be to Knox County Schools, how is this possible that all these kids just to pick where they go to school and number two, what's our governor and body doing in T at TWS Belay to handle these issues? Man, I'm, it, I mean, it's, amen. the buck's got to stop at one of these two. Amen. I agree with you 100%. You know, it's got to stop. Hey, I think that Knox County have districts. I mean, where you're supposed to go to school? They have zones. They have zones? They have zones. I guess you get a waiver and... I, I guess so. I guess just go you wherever away, you want. Go wherever, so why have the zones in? Yeah, I've got a buddy that coaches basketball, and I'm not. This is not Fulton related at all. He coaches basketball in Knox County. He had a kid declined in a transfer. The principal calls in there and said, "Why is this kid declined in this transfer?" Uh, we thought y'all were overcrowded. We didn't. You nobody asked us. 
but yet a school three miles, four miles up the street has over has over 30 transfers in two years for football. So that don't seem like everybody's playing on the same playing field. You know, that, that, don't, that don't seem right to me. Yeah. So I think Knox County holds a, a card um, that's, you know, right now, I don't know that what's going on, but my question is if, if Knox County can't control it, what's the governor body doing? I mean, if you're going to let everybody transfer, give everybody at least one transfer, right? I guess. I mean, let at least make it legal. Or, I think or, it ought to go back like it used to be. The rules ought to be like it used to be. You know, well, this up and transferring, you know. Used to be everybody wasn't scared of a, tra or a lawsuit. Yeah, well, they just have to sue. You know what I mean? But, you know, I don't want to go broke. <laughs> I understand that, but it's but, yet. Yeah, the, the, it's, it's becoming... It's becoming a... Well, you're supposed to go to school to get an education, not necessarily play a sport. The sport's not, <coughs> excuse me, the sport's not guaranteed. That's some extracurricular activity. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's my thought yeah. behind it. But, you you know, George Corles will tell you, and talked to a guy from Furman a couple, uh, four or five weeks ago, you know, yeah, we were good. Yeah, we started winning, but then you start getting the best quarterback from Halls. Then you start getting the best wide receiver from Farragut. And, you know, you start getting these people move into West or move into Maryville, and all of a sudden, hey, you know, we were good, but now we're really good. You know, we got a D, we got a D1 football player came in from another county. So, but back in the day when Oak Ridge was really good, how was Oak Ridge really good? I mean, that wasn't just straight 100% Oak Ridge kids. <coughs> no, back in the day, Oak Ridge had something to offer people to come here. I mean, they had jobs. So you had a, you had a booming metropolis down here with the plants. You had jobs. That's where I, a, a lot of it uh, a lot of it happened. That's my opinion, anyway. Yeah. That's how it happened. But so you know, you're, it's just you're right. It's, it, yeah. There's always been there's always been some type of transfers. Uh, that's people, kids moving around, but not to the extent that it is today, though. I think it's got totally out of control. To I mean, totally out of control. And if totally. You're, and if you're in a school system, you're on a school board, how do you stop it? I mean, you're the one in control. All it just comes down to school board telling the superintendent this is what's this is going to be what we're going to do, and this is going to yeah. be our rules. KCS is in control of this. Say what you want to. Now, if a kid wants to go buy a house in that zone, there's nothing you can do about that. There's nothing you can do about it. They have a house in yeah, there. Yeah, but didn't there used to be a mileage requirement? I don't know that there's a mileage requirement for public to public transfers. I think you go to the school that your address is zoned for. So if I was in Anderson County and I moved to Clinton, I believe I would be eligible in Clinton. If I my don't family think actually has, moved. I don't think Clinton has zones, so I don't really think that matters as far as that goes. So I've always said if you go to school at Clinton Middle School, you ought to go to uh, you ought to be going to Clinton High School. Yeah. If you go to Norris Middle School, you ought to go to Anderson County High School. There ought to not be no ifs, ands, buts about it, but I ain't got no say so about it, so yeah. I don't really know, so so you're telling me that Clinton High School and Anderson County High School don't have zones? I don't think so. I don't think so. So you're telling me that a kid in Anderson County High School most that lives in Norris is not zoned for Anderson County? Now, most of the kids up there go to Norris Middle School and they go to Anderson County. But I don't know that there's... I don't know that there's a per se zone. I don't okay. know that there is because you take the people from the kids from Rocky Top, go to Lake City Middle, and most of those Lake City Middle go to Anderson County. You take them at Norwood and at Clinton Middle, and they go to Clinton. That's just the way it's traditionally been. So there could there be zones? Yeah, there most definitely could be. Quick caller, you on the air? You know this recruiting thing has been out of control for a long time. Um, do you guys remember a guy by the name of Mike Miller that played basketball with Florida? Yes, I do. Yeah. You know, 
back in 2018 or 2019, he became a head coach for a high school team around the Memphis area. Memphis East. It was, I don't know, was it Memphis East or was it another? I was thinking that was. Uh, I thought Mike Miller coached with Penny Hardaway at Memphis East. And then Penny Hardaway left. He left. I'm trying to remember. For some reason, I'm thinking he was coaching those team. But anyway, what happened with that with that guy is is he got a hold of five guys one year that previously had not been at that school, and they played Oak Ridge High School in the state tournament. Well, when they came out on the floor, it was the first time I'd ever seen that team. They had so much size on that team, they looked like a college team. And three of those guys that were on the starting five for Mike Miller, they were all, they ended up being D1 players. <coughs> I think the shortest guy they had on their starting five, the shortest guy they put out there was 6'4". And I guess my point is this. I'm wanting to say, and I might be wrong, I'm wanting to say that that school was not Memphis East. You're right, he did coach with Penny a couple of years, but then he branched off and coached a separate school that was a private school. A private, why, so would, now, a private, why would a private school be playing uh, Oak Ridge in the state tournament? That's my point. I thought the privates and the public separated about five or six years ago. They did. I don't know. Keep I was going. under the impression that they were private. My point is, this, and, and maybe it is this way now, that private plays private. But <coughs> that type of thing shouldn't be allowed to happen either. Yeah. You know, I mean, the size of that team was phenomenal. Uh, I looked at my son and I said, you know, they're bigger than teams that you see, you know, at Tennessee Tech, at Middle Tennessee State. I mean, they're, those guys were those guys were ready to play college right then. Actually, he coached at Houston High School. He was Penny's assistant at Memphis, so, and then he went to Houston. Houston's a public school, so yeah, it was Houston High School. Okay, yeah, that's it. That's Houston. So. I don't know, man. That just left a sour taste in my mouth because, I mean, is it right for him to go out and get five players that didn't even, wasn't even the school district the year before? <laughs> I mean, I don't know I don't if know. it's school district. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, is it right for any kid just to, you know, go play down the street? 15 miles from where they live instead of going to the schooler zone. I, 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 get, I hear you. I don't think that it is. I mean, it, it seems to me that you're going down a slippery slope where you're you're losing the the innocence of high school football. I mean, it, it hadn't been pure for years. But once you start erasing boundaries and just saying, well, you, you kids go to wherever you want to go, um, that's a slippery slope. And I did confirm Anderson County and Clinton do have zones. And if you're in the Clinton zone, you have to be approved to transfer to Anderson County. Anderson County has to be approved to transfer to Clinton. See, I didn't know that. Yeah. So, well, at least there's that, that process in place. You know, at least there's something going on. Yeah. You know, um, Sevier County is another one. I knew about Sevier County. You know, Sevier County has got five or six high schools now. They got a bunch. And to move – you have to have a approved transfer. Have approved transfer. You have to be like in good academic standings. Like there's different things that you have to do. Because if not, you'll get overcrowding. You know, in in the schools. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. you know, I was going to say this about Oak Ridge football. Uh, I've been watching it for a long time, and I'm kind of excited about the, the coach that we've got. Uh, Oak Ridge is throwing the ball more now than it has probably in the last 10 to 15 years. And uh, quarterback's pretty good, and they've got some guys that can go get the ball. So, um, you know, we'll just see what happens. We're we're still a work in progress. But. He's a transfer. 
<laughs> yep, he sure is, and he's from AC. <laughs> yeah, he's a transfer. He sure is. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's just, you know, and Oak Creek has got several other transfers on that team, too. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I, I just have mixed emotions about that. I just, uh, I, you know, I guess it's what you have to consider in order to stay competitive in many cases. Uh, because if you're just relying on only the kids from your hometown, unless you're in a very big town, you're not going to have a very big pool to, to choose from, right? That's correct. I don't know, man. It's just, it's just, it's just an unusual time in in high school ball, and I'm not so sure that I like the way it's going. I'm scared of the way it's going. I'll be honest with you. There's a team in Knox County, if they play for a state championship this year, it's a scary, scary slope, slippery slope that that it, that could be, that you could be going down. I well, mean, it's almost like know, the John Calipari story. I can't take anything away from him as a coach because coaching, right. because coaching is part of recruiting, but he has done less with more than anybody in college basketball. But he, but wow. but part, but part of coaching college basketball is recruiting, and yeah. he can get players. So his every year he's going to be good enough to make the tournament and and win some ball games because of how good his talent is. But yeah. you know, it's he's he's allowed to go recruit. Um, yeah, and I just think it's I do. I had a conversation on the way here tonight. You know, congratulations, first time in eighteen years, Bearden's beat Maryville. But what do the real old Bearden heads that's been sitting over there watching their kids not play, what do they think right now? Are they cool with winning? Well, do you know, you hit you hit a very important point there. Does it not ruin the morale of the, of the hometown kids, the ones that have gone through the school system, grown up, went through the elementary school, the middle school, and then when they go – the high school they don't get to play well you know sometimes if you've lost long enough winning cure some eels how long does it cure it though that's a question i think how long does it how long will they will parents and the fans put up with that that's the as long as they're winning and maybe win state championship they might put up with it for a little while for a little while yeah you're right and i think i think the pressure is is probably more now than it was when we were going up through school. I mean, the pressure's always been there to win, but I just get a feeling that these coaches are under such extreme pressure to win that they'll consider just about anything to stay competitive. Probably right. So, well, guys, I appreciate it. All right, thank, you. thank you. Thanks for the call, man. All right, bye. Hey, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll talk Tennessee football till we end this thing. So we'll be right back here just in a few minutes on the free medical clinic Friday night scoreboard. We should never lose sight of our health. To keep moving forward, let's not forget everything we've learned. Limit the salty food options. Make your own daily exercise routine. And always receive regular checkups. More than anything, we have learned how important these small steps can make a big difference so we can all continue to move forward together. At Ferris, we want you to get the most out of your time and end each day feeling good. That's why we pioneered exclusive lawnmower suspension technology, allowing for full speed mowing, even over the roughest terrain. Grow your business by getting more done in less time with Ferris. Ferris. Work hard, feel good. Found exclusively at independent Ferris dealers. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. 
Daniel Forrester has been trusted by Anderson County families for nearly two decades. Daniel has appeared in Anderson County Chancery, Circuit, Sessions, and Juvenile Court thousands of times over the past decade. A Rule 31 mediator, Daniel has been trusted to mediate hundreds of cases across Anderson County. A community leader, Daniel has worked closely with local officials to make Anderson County a better place. A conservative and dedicated husband and father, Daniel's faith has shaped his character and integrity. On March 5th, vote Daniel Forrester Forrester for Anderson County Chancellor. Our story starts with a promise made to the communities of East Tennessee. A promise to always look forward to the horizon and past it. A promise to help you live well. At Covenant Health, whenever you enter one of our hospitals, visit any of our physicians or talk to us on the phone, we will welcome you and your family as one of our own. Because it's about you and it's about time. Covenant Health, for every moment. On-site care in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of healthcare experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. On-site care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, on-site care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. And now on-site care welcomes Darren Wright, a board-certified family nurse practitioner who will be accepting new patients. Call 865-285-9588 to schedule an appointment at on-site care. A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach, to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one -on -one with your instructors. Together, we succeed, one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at RoanState.edu now, and let's succeed together. Pat Ryan here with Kathy Mae Martin. If you're thinking of buying or selling real estate, then make the right play call and contact Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Kathy's 30 plus years of knowledge and experience gives her clients the competitive edge. You know, like me on game day. Kick is up and it's good. Kathy Mae Martin for all your real estate needs. Evans Mortuary has been serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. Football is back. And OEB Law is excited for a season full of big hits. Perfect plays. And those nail-biting near misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense and tackle any obstacles blocking you from scoring a full and fair settlement. Call OEB Law, 865-546-1111, and turn your wreck into a check. 1952, that's the year Hammers opened the first store in East Tennessee. Now there are five stores and there's always something new. Like in Hammers' popular ladies' boutique department, you'll find the lowest price possible on new arrivals every week. Find similar deals in the men's department and the expanded rug department. Plus, special purchases always offer surprise savings. You never know what you'll find next at Hammers. Welcome back to the Free Medical Clinic Friday Night School Board. And uh, Tennessee has a big ball game tomorrow with South Carolina, a team that absolutely hammered them last year at South Carolina. Different story this year. So we'll see. I would think right off the bat, there'll be a bunch of fans that'll be really on uh, social media just because of the uniforms that Tennessee's gonna wear tomorrow. Not, are they, they're all not, black? All black, not the traditional orange and white. Yeah. Either way, or orange on orange, or anything like that, because they were on them on the smoky grays, even though it had orange hit, they were on them. So they're gonna be on them about the all black. You can just about, you can just about count on it that there will that they will be on them. So uh, uh, I don't know if Tennessee wins tomorrow or not. I'm afraid to pick them. I'm just gonna be on. I might just pick them like I did last week when I picked them. I picked them to win by three. Maybe you're a little safer. <laughs> 
Because I said the week before, maybe 20 something or something like that. Let's get this call right quick. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Anderson County, Warren, 28 to 14. All right. Thank you, buddy. We appreciate it. Who they, they, is Clinton out of the playoffs? Is Clinton what? Is Clinton out of the playoffs? No, they're not. They're not out of the playoffs. Anderson not. County is too. Yeah. No, Ash County's in the playoffs. In the playoffs? Yeah, they'll be there. Okay, thank you. All right, see you, bud. Bye. That's a caller. He's pretty reliable. He calls every week. He's a big AC fan. So, But anyway, I'm afraid to pick Tennessee tomorrow. You, you think they'll win? I hope that, we, I hope that Tennessee gets the Spencer 18 games straight. 18 games straight. 30 years. So Bearden hasn't beat them in 30 years, but it's 18 straight losses. Yeah, and all of a sudden it changes in two years. Great caller, you on the air? Did you guys really think you missed me? I'm sorry. We've not missed you. We've not missed you one bit. Uh, Brad Jones messaged me so after I'm calling, so I thought I would do you a favorite call. No, well, we we didn't miss you. Is, is, you got anything important to say tonight? Well, a Clinton loss is pretty important. A Clinton didn't lose tonight, so you got anything important to say about tonight? <laughs> Uh, they lost, hey, they lost last night. Okay, we've already talked. We've already broke that down and discussed it, and probably pissed half so the anyway, people off uh, around here. So, what did you think about the uh, game tonight for Oak Ridge? I couldn't tell you. I didn't. I yeah. didn't see it or watch it. I didn't go. No, probably no more than you did. So you probably had to listen to your friend David Clary talk about it. So you probably don't know nothing about it neither. <laughs> hey, that, that's my boy, of course. Yeah, that's okay, radio. your boy. Huh? Prepradio.com. Yeah, okay. Video on YouTube. Go look okay. it up. All right, I will. Not. It, it, it had not. It had uh, 696 views tonight. What did you guys oh, get? That's good. I, we've, we're probably in the <laughs> we're millions. We doubled that. We're probably doubled that. <laughs> you know, your the audience that you and your boy have is a little small to the audience that me and Cox have. So come on, don't even compare. That's apples and oranges, bud. <laughs> And you're all no, rotten. You're a cutter, so. Y'all's were rotten, so uh, come on. You got anything else you need to talk about? Uh, well, Queener, I think I'll just leave it at this. 14 straight wins over your Dragons. That's a new school record. Okay. You know what? I'm going to go and, home. And, I'm going to go home and sleep really well tonight because I didn't play in that game and. You know, it doesn't really, uh, as being a Clinton guy, it really doesn't upset me. It didn't mean anything last night. It upset me more to lose the Oak Ridge the week before than it did last night because you win the Oak Ridge game, you probably are sitting in first place. You're looking pretty for maybe more than one round of playoff games at home. So I'm more worried about Clinton playing on North City than I was. I, you know, so it didn't, it's not an effect, it doesn't affect my life in any way. I'm not going to go home and sit in my recliner and just think about that game over and over and over. I hate Clinton lost last night, but that's all I can do is say I hate they lost. Well, I wanted to comment on that Oak Ridge caller about a couple of things. I mean, he had some good history there. Uh, there's, as far as I'm concerned, and I could be wrong, but there's only two transfers, and those are the AC boys, Blaine and Will Tressley, the quarterback and the wide receiver. I can't really think of any other transfers. In the running back team. a transfer from a couple years ago? Dozier. Dozier? He's hey. Oak Ridge. He's Do Oak Ridge. Dozier went to He's middle Oak school. Ridge. Dozier went to middle school at Jefferson or Robertsville? He went to Robertsville. <laughs> You're sure you, about that? Do you guys not know? Do you guys not know your football? I thought you guys ran this show, not me. No, we're asking you. I just told you. You've got to listen better. I thought he transferred in with another running back. Incorrect. Okay. So he's a Robertsville guy. Robertsville guy. Well, he's a heck of a he's a heck of he's a heck of a football player. Had a pretty good night yeah. tonight, also. Yeah, he had a great night. He, uh, like I said, Oak Ridge product. There's only two transfers in this team, but I can tell you who has a lot of transfers that's not named Oak Ridge, and that's Clinton. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I think all the, all the hype came from some of their uh, certain coaches that made a lot of Facebook posts. And I'll leave it at that. That's where all the hype. You may not have. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to say the coach's name, but for any of you callers out there from Oak Ridge and Clinton, you know who I'm talking about. There's a certain coach out there that talked a lot of crap on Facebook. We coming. Oh, yeah, you're coming. You never arrived, coach. 
Okay. Who's, he talking about? <laughs> Who's the coach? I don't know who you're talking what? about. Who's the coach? I don't know who you're talking about. I'm not about. saying the coach's name. I'm not saying his name. I'll have someone else call in. Hey, any other any other person out there that wants to call out the name, do it. Because I'm not doing it. But my roommate's laughing because he knows who it is. There's an assistant coach out there that may or may not have played for Oak Ridge. Currently coach, currently coach is at Clinton. And he talked a lot of crap about his alma mater. A lot of crap. <laughs> And he couldn't back it up. So, so, for any of you callers out there that want to call the coach's name, by all means, call. Hey, 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 are you talking about? Are you talking about Don Coquit? <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, you you said it, not me. I just you asked. Said I mean, he's an Oak Ridge. I knew. I mean, I just know that he played football in Oak Ridge, and he's on the Clinton coaching staff. I I couldn't tell you. I've not seen the first. Post. I've never even I, heard of the guy. I don't do that stuff. I don't do social. Yeah. I'm not a social media guy. So, you know. Come on, I don't know. That's what I said earlier. You're going on about all this crap, all the high expectations. I didn't hear that all summer at Clinton. I thought Clinton was well, going to have a little bit better that's, football that's, team than what they years. had, but that's it. I mean, I didn't. I don't See, know nothing about what that's you're. That's fair. That's fair. I don't know. I don't know fair. nothing but about we have to that. On social media. So, ah, you should. You know, that's what you get for running your mouth on social media. I guess <laughs> if you can't back that's, it up. That's exactly what you You got to be able to back that's it up. A, yeah. Not only that, you get 14 straight, so. Well, well, you know, I don't. But like I said. Whatever. <laughs> like I said, as you, like I said, it's fair to you because you didn't know. Let me ask like, you, Cox said kids. he didn't know nothing about Don Cox. When did he play, uh, when did he play in Oak Ridge? Do you remember? I don't know. He was it, probably was it in? 80s, 80s, yeah, 80s, yeah, 80s. Was in the 80s? Yeah. Yeah. 85, 86, something like that. In, I was still in diapers. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. This was my mom. So this guy is a coach at one school or played at one school, and he was talking on Facebook or something. Apparently, he did at? play at Oak Ridge. He's a coach today at Clinton. Oh, okay. My phone's blowing up. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so. Uh, he, you know what? That's out of fun. all the coaches that are on Clinton staff, I know – and I don't know Don Coke, but I, I know him if I see him. I probably hadn't talked to him maybe I three or see, I, three I, or four times. Him. And he used to come when we did the show on Wednesday night at the Pizza Inn. He would come and watch Coach Gaddis's show. I don't know if he was – I have no idea what the connection was at the time. I, I know who he is. I know who the Clinton – I know who Clinton's offensive coordinator is, and I know who their line coach is. Uh, but I don't – I don't know anybody else that's on Clinton's stuff. I mean, if I know him, I don't know him. Know their own. Cl I know Coach Keith, the head coach. I mean, I do know him, but I don't know any of Clinton coaches. I don't keep up with the program. I, I really don't. In the years past, I've not had time when I was doing live football every Friday night. I had to worry about where I was going more than I did worry about what Clinton was doing. Only when we had Clinton did I worry about Clinton. So I don't, I don't really keep up with it too much. Well, you're not missing anything, so there's nothing really to keep up with. So. Well, you know, right now you're right. There's not. Clinton's lost three games in a row and got a chance next Friday night to turn it around if Josh Keys is able to go, if he's not still injured, and we'll see and see how it goes out and see what happens next Friday night, see if they can beat Lenore City. Well, so hopefully we'll he, it's nothing serious, but I was at that game, and it looked like a collarbone injury, and that's what I heard on the uh, side. But – could well, be wrong. So you, so Cox asked me earlier. I told him I thought he was holding his rib area. So I, you know, I don't know. So I, I'm not. I know the orthopedic doctor was on the field last night very well. I guess I could call him and ask him. He's probably not going to tell me, but I, I know him very well enough. But, uh, but you know, I don't. I just hope the kid's okay because I hear he's really a good kid, and I know he's really a good athlete. You can see that on the football field. Well. I just wanted to, like that Oak Ridge caller talking about Mike Miller's team from Memphis having all these transfers and Penny Hardaway. I think uh, I think a lot of Oak Ridgers going into that game not knowing who Penny Hardaway was, didn't, like I said, they didn't really fond of have an opinion of him. But after that game, I can, if you knew what happened in that game, there was there's a lot of what's what I'm looking for unprofessional tactics that Coach Hardaway pulled during that game. I'll just go ahead and say one of them, as one of my, as my roommate, who's the broadcaster with David Clary, 
pointed out when he was at the game, Oak Ridge was praying in the locker room, getting ready for Memphis, or whatever Penny Hardaway was coaching. And he just, and they were in that stadium, or that uh, gymnasium, I should say, whatever it was, they ha- those locker rooms are very close. So you can hear from the other side. As uh, Coach Green was praying with his guys, you can just hear them blaring music purposely into the air filters to try and bother us. Like they were just blasting the most loud music you can think of as they were, as the Oak Ridge kids were, were playing. So that was a very distasteful thing in my book and a lot of Oak Ridge's books regarding that game. That's definitely a salty game. That will probably stick with us for a while. And you know what's really weird is that was also the team that blew out the Fulton Falcons 50 points at Oak Ridge. So, it's also the team that brought home a that, state championship that, that year. Team, and that <laughs> it's team also the team. It's championship. also yeah. the team that brought home its gold ball that year. I, I, I just pointed out. I just said that was also the same team that won the state. Yeah, that, so, that, that, fi- that, fi- that fifty spot got y'all a lot. Hey, we beat Bolton by fifty. We got you a lot. You want me to wear my ring next week and show you? I got one in my Well, you know, so. I would. Well, I would love to be all the three for a state championship too. So. Yeah, just like last year, we beat Oak Ridge and won a state championship. What's next, caller? <laughs> hey, congratulations! You did good. Congrats. Hey, do you know Cody Rimbert? Do you know Cody Rimbert? Does that name ring a bell? No. You don't. Wide receiver for no. Oak Ridge. No. Okay. He transferred from Central. I was just going on with his transfer list. I'm starting to get a lot of messages on the purity of. Yeah. Well, you. Yeah. Uh, and uh, actually, 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 it's Almani, not Cody. Oh, okay. And he's a he's an Oak Ridge kid. He rid, he transferred to Central, but then he came back to Oak Ridge. Just wanted oh. to help you out there. Okay. So that's a good that was a good try, Cox. It's a very good try. Yeah. Double time me. You said, you said Who are you getting re- your info from, like, David or Alex? His name's not Cody. It's Armani Rimber. <coughs> Who are you getting so your Amari info from, transfer. David or Alex? Is Alex? Alex has to be helping you. I can tell you what Alex can help you on. The same thing I can help you on. I still appreciate you dropping that 50 piece on us because we brought home that gold ball. Well, Don Cole would help me. So. <laughs> All right, we got to go. See you. Quick caller, you're near. Hey, David, you and Jonathan, I appreciate you taking my call there. Uh, Anytime, Mike. I, just, I was just going to speak out. I kind of heard there a little bit through the grapevine, maybe uh, Joshua Keith may have a broken rib. Oh. I mean, I can't uh, swear to that or anything like that, but that's kind of what I heard. And also, I, uh, I got a grandson that plays on the high school football team. He's just a little sophomore there. And, and I, I told him <laughs> I told him before the season started, I said, they were excited about playing in Anderson County. We got all these good players and stuff. And I, and I told him, I said, Anderson County has got a player coming back. To, I said, Nick Moog is a beast. And he pretty much well showed it last night. <laughs> Uh, he is. He couldn't tackle him, and they couldn't keep him off on the defensive side of the ball there. That kid there can play football. <laughs> he can. And uh, as far as uh, the balls go, uh, well, I, I was going to say this too first there. Uh, and Jonathan might confirm this with me too there. The quarterback for the Mavericks there, I think he's like a at least a two or three time transfer. He's been around. <laughs> yeah, he's been he to three pretty schools. Good, right? He throws the ball pretty good there. Done a pretty good job directing the offense, but he has uh, he has transferred around a couple of times at least. Yeah, he's been to three schools in four years. That's what I thought, Jonathan. But uh, he's a uh, he's pretty good looking quarterback. He's got a good arm on him. But, and uh, I, I'll go ahead and comment on the balls there. I, from what I've seen, heard there, South Carolina's uh, – <laughs> They don't have much of an offensive line, and they're a little bit weak in the defensive secondary. I'm not sold on uh, Bazooka Joe, David. I, I think you're probably on board with me with that there. He, he's he got a heck of an arm on him there, but he, 
I don't think he has a lot of control with it. <laughs> he's a he's a, a big overthrower. <laughs> they, they were talking about there this last week. They were, he overthrew, but he didn't overthrow as much as he did last year. That's but, true. Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens there. I kind of like the uniform changes and stuff there. All black uh, Saturday night there, and, and, and we'll see what happens. And uh, I don't know. I don't think our receivers is is as good and, and can catch the ball as good as they did last year. But I listen to you guys' comments, and I appreciate you taking my call. Thanks, Mike. See you, bud. All right. See you, buddy. All right, bud. Hey, let me ask you this question. Because college football, well, not only college, but you see it, you see it on the high school level a little bit too by having all these different uniforms and everything. How has Penn State and Michigan and places like that been able to survive with just plain uniforms? You know, Penn State is a pretty plain, nothing on the helmet except for a, a black stripe maybe. Well, how, have they, how have they survived just being a plain just a plain uniform. I mean, the t how's – why do you have to have 15 different sets of combinations? You don't. You don't. Uh, marketing, you know, marketing gurus love that stuff. Oh, I'm sure they kids do. Kids love about, it. Well, that's what I mean, kids. kids. Uh, no, Oregon changed the dynamics of four helmets, seven different uniforms. You know, all, but Oregon changed all that back when Chip Kelly was there. They'd come out with a different uniform every – Every weekend. Well, I got the big Nike man there yeah. with him. Now, so, uh, you know, Tennessee would do something, <coughs> but I look at Alabama. I think Alabama's the plain uniform, the standard uh, of the last 15 years. Clemson, none of those have done much change. I think Clemson occasionally goes to purple, um, but I don't have a problem with it. Um, I think kids like it, but it's not something you have to have. So um, it is evident. Just from callers we've had tonight and people we have know that transferring's not a fan favorite, having all these kids transfer around. No. It's not. Uh, if we did a poll, the poll would probably be a lot decided. But every one of us that support a school at some time has benefited from a transfer. I mean, you know, you benefit from that. But at the end of the day, I think the biggest question is, is how are our school systems and how is TW Spoy as a governed body going to manage the out of control numbers in which this is happening? It's out of control. You can say what you want. Yeah, to. but it's been out of control for a while. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's honest. Yeah, and, I mean, and it continues to get worse. It's going to continue to get worse until something happens. It's not getting any, you're right, it's not getting any better, and it's not going to get any better. And, and the Knox County I mean, coach that's watching this, that's texting me, his argument's going to be, well, Maryville and Alcoa don't mandate it. Why does Knox County need to mandate it? You know, and so, you know what I mean? They feel like they're not playing on a fair level playing field to some of these open enrollment schools. I always looked at Bearden myself, okay? Uh, as far as football, I didn't, I don't, I didn't keep up in the past with Bearden very much at all. I mean, they're not even a blip on my radar. I always thought Bearden was more of a basketball school than it was a football school myself. I mean, just on the basketball end, just running with Fulton back in the day a little bit. And, you know, Bearden always had some really good basketball teams and there were some really good basketball players that were there, and there were some good games there. I mean, so I always thought Bearden of a little bit more of a of a For sure. a, of a of a basketball school 100%. than I did anything about football. Yeah. I mean, you knew they had a football team, and that was about the extent of it. And I'm sure over the years they've they've had some good football teams, but I, I don't know nothing about it. I just know their basketball teams have been had some really well. Yep, good basketball teams. Always had good basketball teams. Won a state championship. I mean, how many schools in Knoxville can say they brought back a state championship in basketball? I yeah. mean, what, Austin East? Austin East and, and Fulton. The, and, and, and Bearden. And Bearden. Is there anybody else? Maryville. 
but they're in Knoxville. They're, I mean, they're, they're in Blount. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, in Knox County, I don't know. Alcoa, is Alcoa ever brought one back? Yeah, they won one this year. Oh, they, oh, they did? That's right, yeah. they did. So they're in Blount County, too. Yeah. But so you look, you know, basketball's a, football's a little bit more prominent around here than basketball. Basketball's a little bit more prominent west. Harder to win at basketball. You got three of them. Football, you got nine or six or whatever. Now we yeah. got four in basketball, which is, I mean, I'd say it, I, I appreciate the state championship, but it's watered down now too. Look at the average margin of victory for the first round state champ, for state, I mean, you just look at the margin of victories for those state tournament games and it tells you that. But, but it's become, but like I said, man, it, this rolls back to one thing and it's one thing only and yep. money. Comes back yeah. to money, man. Comes back to money. Money, 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 yeah. money, money, money. Yeah, I think the biggest thing with um, a bunch of Keith questions, you know, and stuff, I think the, the, the best thing is is that they'll – I think everybody will know something here soon, but I, I do – I don't think any – as a report right now, I don't think anything's necessarily broken or any – you know, anything like that. It's just going to – time will kind of tell on the how bad the injury is. Yeah, I hadn't uh, – like I said, I got a, a really good friend uh, – Rock lives right across the street from Coach Keith, and I talked to him today. He had not seen Coach Keith today, or he had not seen Josh either one. So, uh, uh, and I, I didn't call him tonight before I come down here. So uh, time will tell, and I'd say it's how much tell. pain he could, how much he can tolerate, yeah. and uh, you know, most good athletes, most good athletes, if he ain't got something broken or something like that, to where he can be really put in mm -hmm. danger. I'd say if he's just got a bruise or something like that. As long as that right to, arm will work. As long as that right arm will work, he's got a can. It, you know, he'll be all right. So, uh, what about Tennessee, Mark? What do you think? What's the score? I think Tennessee wins. I think Rattler's a great quarterback, but I think he's uh, I think he's a good quarterback. I think he's a great quarterback at home, and I think he's an average quarterback on the road. Uh, and hopefully tomorrow we get the average guy. Last week I think I watched him play a little bit, and he only missed one pass <laughs> the whole time, and it was pass interference. Question: Did you watch by any chance the Ohio State Notre Dame yes. game? What did you think about that game? Um, did you? Uh, let me just ask you this question instead of that. What did you think about Ryan Day's comments after about what Lou Holtz said? <laughs> Ryan Day, and I've got a good friend that is a really big Ohio State fan, and I've been telling him sometime now. Time will tell on Ryan Day. He got it handed to him on a silver platter and had some good recruiting classes already lined up for him. Yeah. I think out of all of the Ohio State teams he's had, that might be the least impressive I've watched. That's just me. And I follow him a little bit because I'd hate him because <laughs> my buddy's such a big fan. Well, there's not many people like Ohio yeah. State, period. I mean, it, their fan base is what yeah. it is right there and that's yeah. about it they're not but i i think time will tell michigan beats tell. him again he didn't go to the playoffs again reload next year lose a couple games again I, I just he's not urban meyer and i think he needs probably needs to pop down until he does something that matters and no matter at ohio state's win the national championship it's true say what you want to well i think tennessee wins tomorrow by six I think, yeah, I think that's good. Anywhere from no. six to 13 points. No, I'm going to go six. Yeah. Then they better be learn. Just six to nothing. <laughs> they, better, they better be able to run the football. <laughs> well, I mean, we I, talked about that before the Florida game. Whoever won the battle, the, the O and D line, whoever ran for most yards going to win, and they whipped us up front that day. Tennessee ran the ball good in the Florida game second half. First half, they went running the ball. Yeah. Can't spot them, old man. Can't oh. spot them. Can't spot them. That place is going to be rocking and rolling tomorrow night. Yes. Think about it. They still could be four and one going to Alabama, right? Or five and one. Three and one now. South five Carolina. and one. Five and one. Five and one going to Alabama. When they go to Alabama, if they're five and one, and Alabama's five and one, that's going to be a huge game. And whoever wins probably has a pretty good driver's seat to the playoffs until, and whoever loses is done. I've watched Georgia a couple times, but you got to remember who they're playing. They don't look real. Dominant like they oh, have. Offense, they don't look real good. They don't look good. I've watched Alabama just a, a little bit. They don't look dominant on offense <coughs> or yeah. defense. They look like they have came back to the pack a little bit, and they're just a mediocre football team. I mean, just a 
I'm not saying they're a bad football team. I know what you mean. They've come back to the path. They're, you can tell. It's like the Maryville story. They're not dominant, but yeah. they're still really good. They're still really good, but yeah. they got a they got their situation at quarterback might just be just as bad as what I think Tennessee's is, and everybody else thinks Tennessee's. I wonder why they didn't go to the transfer portal and get a stud quarterback. I don't think, you know what? I don't think Saban knocked that crap. I don't think he likes it, but I don't think he minded. Well, he didn't do it, I know. so it may, might have, it might come back to haunt him. It's like Dabo. He ain't doing it, but he ain't winning, and he well, better win. They are saying Dabo's going to have to do it, or he ain't going to be at Clemson much longer. From you know, there's you got some people that are really putting pressure on some coaches right now. Yep. Dabo Sweeney's one. Saban's another one. I, I tell you, who's on the hot seat right now? Jimbo. Besides Jimbo, Lane Kiffin. Hmm. All the money they're paying him. They're expecting him to win. They're making a lot off Lane. They're making too. a lot. All right, folks, we've said Tennessee wins tomorrow. It's been a, an interesting week of high school football. I mean, some close games and some teams that haven't won in a long time wins. And we've talked about every subject tonight that you basically can talk about high school football and college football. We appreciate all the people that have called us tonight. We appreciate our sponsors, the Free Medical Clinic. Uh, for sponsoring our show along with all of our other sponsors. There's too many for me to start uh, naming all of them. I'll leave somebody out making mad and I don't want to do that. But if you've seen one of our sponsors tonight and you're in their establishment, tell me you appreciate sponsoring high school football here on Channel 12. And we at Channel 12 appreciate them sponsors. Until next Friday night, we'll be right back here on the Free Medical Clinic Friday night, night scoreboard. We'll see you next week. Game of the week, Hammond Rockwood. <laughs> utility bills when you make the switch to natural gas for heating, cooking, and clothes drying. ORUD has exciting appliance incentives to offer your family. Buy appliances and get rewarded. It's as simple as that. Learn more about how much you can save at ORUD.org. ORUD is your one-stop shop. We sell and install gas appliances for our customers and make it easy to add to your bill with our 0% interest financing. Natural gas is affordable, reliable, and safe. We are proud to offer our customers a product that saves money, provides consistent service, and is a clean energy source. ORUD is your affordable energy choice, so make the game-winning play by switching to natural gas this football season.
while Kingston remains in 3A, but this is a great non-region test for both programs. It's also an opportunity to tune up for the rest of the season. The Yellow Jackets are unbeaten in Region 2 and have a great opportunity to host a playoff game. Loudon suffered its first loss of the season two weeks ago against new region opponent Hickson, but a home game is not out of the question for the Redskins either. Kingston is looking for its first win in this series versus Coach Herrig since 2011. We'll find out if they can do it in tonight's edition of the OEB Law Game of the Week. Day or night, 24-7, someone will be there to answer and give you a free consultation to get on your case immediately. Call 865-546-1111 or visit the website full of helpful information, wreckintoacheck.com. That's OEB Law. I'm Aaron Harvey, joined by my esteemed colleague, Coach Dan Shoemaker. This series has seen a lot of great battles over the years. You know, this has always been one of those consistent, constant matchups. You know, it's really iconic, been going on since 1927. Uh, when this was a region matchup, it often determined uh, playoff positioning and if you were traveling or if you were staying at home for the first round. This has always been an important game, and it's usually been a very good game as well. What were you doing all the way back in 1927? Oh, uh, well, it's a long time ago, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. A long time ago. So it should be a good one, and we'll preview it as well as other games in the area tonight as well. Thanks to Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties. Elaine has been in the real estate business for going on eight years now, and she is a multi-million dollar producer. You can feel confident trusting her with all of your real estate needs. Give her a call at 423-619-6748. That's 423-619-6748. That picture is on your screen now. If uh, you're watching this on television, yeah, take out your phone, take a picture of that so you'll have her number. Or if you're watching this on your phone, then take a screenshot of it so you'll know that number. You can give her a call or a text. We'll have more of the Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties pregame show in just a moment as part of your OEB Law Game of the Week. At OEB Law, our home is your home. And your family is our family. And down here, family takes care of family. Giving back and helping out whenever needed. OEB Law is proud to be from East Tennessee. OEB Law feels like home. Daniel Forrester has been trusted by Anderson County families for nearly two decades. Daniel has appeared in Anderson County Chancery, Circuit, Sessions, and Juvenile Court thousands of times over the past decade. A Rule 31 mediator, Daniel has been trusted to mediate hundreds of cases across Anderson County. A community leader, Daniel has worked closely with local officials to make Anderson County a better place. A conservative and dedicated husband and father, Daniel's faith has shaped his character and integrity. On March 5th, vote Daniel Forrester for Anderson County Chancellor. Kathy May Martin has been making real estate dreams a reality for over three decades. Buying or selling real estate is one of the most important decisions you'll ever make. Choosing the right realtor is next. Thinking of buying or selling? Call Kathy May Martin at Coldwell Banker Jim Henry and Associates for all your real estate needs. Rest assured, with Kathy's knowledge and experience, you will be on the winning team. Evans Mortuary has been serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. 1952, that's the year Hammers opened the first store in East Tennessee. Now there are five stores and there's always something new. Like in Hammers popular ladies boutique department, you'll find the lowest price possible on new arrivals every week. Find similar deals in the men's department and the expanded rug department. Plus, special purchases always offer surprise savings. You never know what you'll find next at Hammers. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. 
Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. Welcome back to Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. Elaine serves most of all East Tennessee's real estate needs, but especially Anderson, Blunt, Cumberland, Loudon, Knox, McMinn, Monroe, Morgan, Roan, and Scott counties. Basically, if you're watching this, then she can serve you in East Tennessee. If you need to buy or sell a home, give her a call or text today at 423-619-6748. That's Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties. I'm Aaron Harvey with Coach Dan Shoemaker. We are at Kingston, Dr. Nat. Sugarman Field, and it is senior night here at Kingston, so all the seniors are being introduced on the field right now. Let's talk about some games going on around the area in week seven. Week seven. Week I, seven. I said wow. that correct. It's week seven. You know, last night saw a rivalry that's been pretty heated over the years as Anderson County took on Clinton. The first half was everything you want in a high school football game, and for the second week in a row, Clinton ended the first half with a touchdown with zeros on the clock. Yeah, I was looking forward to a high-scoring ball game, but it really seemed to be more of that ball control, you know, kind of long drives, 10, 12 play drives. And you're right, Aaron, Kingston, I mean, excuse me, uh, Clinton scores last play of the half. Uh, you know, big play, big play. Uh, each team had long scoring drives. Defense was bend but don't break. But second half, the Mavericks kind of took things under control and were able to, to kind of grind the thing out. Turnovers made it interesting to, in the fourth quarter, but the Mavericks were able to solve this one away fairly easily. And, and just to editorialize for just a second, I just hate it for that Clinton team loaded with talent. The quarterback, Josh McKeith, coach's son, of course committed to go play for uh, – UT Martin, uh, a big playmaker back there at wide receiver, DeMond Marable. He is uh, committed to go play at Purdue. Juwan Goins is uh, he, he's capable of playing D1 and just a beautiful pass to end the half last night. So much momentum, but for whatever reason, Clinton just hasn't been able to put it together for four quarters. Just that first half, uh, they play like game breakers, and then it just kind of slips away in the second half. Just hate it for Clinton. That was a non-region game last night, though, so uh, playoffs still in the picture for Clinton, but they're going to have to have uh, a lot of success these next four weeks. You know, Co Coach Keith was talking about the two E's that they needed, effort and execution, and at times they look like gangbusters. Yeah. But then, you know, then, then a bad play happens, and it takes them a while to recover from that. Yeah. Just watching that game last night, Mark Packer is like, I'm doing the math. The board is incorrect. They say it's fourth and 45. It's actually fourth and 54. <laughs> I was like, wow. Wow. How do you get into a fourth and 54? That's very rare. But uh, anyway, moving on from that, uh, so many great games tonight. Let's start with Bearden at Maryville. There were three teams who defeated Maryville last season. Two were Alcoa and West. It just so happens that those two teams are Bearden's only two losses this season. The Bulldogs look poised to give Maryville everything the Rebels want this season. And this one could come down. Could come down to the final moments. Yeah, I think Bearden will bring it tonight, and we will see if Maribel can respond to that pressure. Mar Maribel's been challenged this year. You know, that's, that's uh, you know, two teams that beat them. Teams like Maribel, though, they either win or they learn. And you want, at this, by this time of the season, you want to see what they've learned from those losses and what they can learn about themselves. And if they can get the offense back on track, I think they'll be all right. But uh, Bearden hasn't won this thing since 1993, but but I think they've got a good shot tonight. Bearden's got a great football team, but there's a lot of great football teams in Knoxville, and it seems like all those teams are playing each other. And so uh, Bearden has two losses. Very well could be undefeated at this point in the season, though, because those two losses came down to the final moments when Bearden lost a lead that they had held for the entire game. Uh, speaking of Alcoa and West, both are undefeated, but that will change tonight as the Tornadoes and Rebels do battle in West Knoxville. Two of Tennessee's very best teams 
things collide in what should be worth, well worth the admission price and then some. Yeah, I agree with that too, Aaron. Uh, this might be the best matchup I think this week, not discounting our game tonight. This is going to be a great game too, uh, but that's a high powered undefeated, two undefeated teams coming together. They're both currently ranked number one in their respective classes. They're both defending state champions. Last year, West edged out that victory 29-26. Uh, this one, I think, will be just as close, and I think special teams may make the difference on this one. Could indeed happen that way. What a wonderful game that was last season. So exciting, and uh, just seeing the highlights from that last year, just an amazing game. So uh, that is going on tonight. A couple other really great games going on tonight as Kingston wraps up its senior night here at Dr. Nat Sugarman Field, and we will preview some of those games going on around the area, but also, of course, we got to preview our game tonight, Kingston and Loudon taking place. Wonderful rivalry game with a long history, and we will do that when we get back to the Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. Patterson's Appliances has been helping families like yours find quality home appliances from trusted brands including Whirlpool, Maytag, and KitchenAid for over 55 years. Our knowledgeable appliance specialists know how to outfit your kitchen or laundry room with the right appliances to meet your needs. We service what we sell with our own in-house factory trained service technicians. And for the DIYers, our parts department is always ready to help customers find the appliance parts they need. Patterson's Home Appliances, because we care. A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach, to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one -on -one with your instructors. Together, we succeed, one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at roanstate.edu now, and let's succeed together. care of family, giving back and helping out whenever needed. OEB Law is proud to be from East Tennessee. OEB Law feels like home. Our story starts with a promise made to the communities of East Tennessee. A promise to always look forward to the horizon and past it. A promise to help you live well. At Covenant Health, whenever you enter one of our hospitals, visit any of our physicians, or talk to us on the phone, we will welcome you and your family as one of our own. Because it's about you, and it's about time. Covenant Health, for every moment. Energize your home with natural gas from ORUD, your affordable energy choice. See all the ways natural gas can improve your home by visiting one of the ORUD showrooms in Oak Ridge or Kingston. New gas appliances run more efficiently. They provide hot water when you need it, precise heat control for cooking, and can dry clothes in about half the time. Comfort you can feel. Savings you can use. ORUD Natural Gas. And welcome back to the Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. Elaine is a real estate agent with integrity. She produced about $10 million in sales last year alone, and she serves almost all of East Tennessee. If you're in the need to buy or sell a home, give Elaine a call or text at 423-619-6748. Again, 423-619-6748 for Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties. Back once again with Dr. and Coach Dan Shoemaker. I'm Aaron Harvey. In what is arguably the toughest region in the state, 
State, the Farragut Admirals are facing what could end up being uh, the, a region champion tonight, and their playoff hopes could very well also be on the line. Bradley Central's in town, and the Bears are undefeated. I mean, we're talking about a Farragut team that lost to West by seven points in a 38-31 showdown, and the Admirals could be fighting for their playoff lives tonight, which is so hard to believe, but that could also be the extra motivation Eddie Courtney's team squad needs to pull off the upset. Fer Farragut's going to have a tough task tonight. Bradley Central's ranked number one. Uh, Tennessee commit Boo Carter is a special athlete on that team. He can take it to the house whenever he touches the ball. Farragut will need some breaks, and I think they're going to have to have great special teams play to keep this one close. If they can keep this one close into the fourth quarter, they can have a, a chance, but they're going to have to really work hard to make sure that they're doing the little things well tonight. And speaking of fighting for the playoff lives, Wartburg is heading to Polk County to take on the Wildcats, who are calming off their first region loss of the season at the hands of Oneida 21-17. The Bulldogs seem to get locked into tight battles in the first half before ultimately falling short in the second. If Dustin Peel's team can put four quarters together, this is another one that could come down to the very end. Coach Lou Holtz uh, said said it best, I think. He said teams have to learn how to compete before they learn how to win. And, and the Bulldogs are competing very well at times, but then they struggle to put a, a complete game together. Polk County is a solid team, and they are looking to solidify their playoff spot, while Warburg is going to need some help, help to get back into that playoff hunt. A good friend of mine, a Polk County legend, Coach Bill Triplett, uh, is... is my go-to guy down in Polk County. And he tells me that they're going to always play you tough down there. And on top of that, there's a long, long trip from Wartburg down to Benton, Tennessee. And if the Bulldogs can overcome that bull, that long ride, that bus ride, and then string four quarters together, I think they may have a chance. But they're going to have to play a complete game tonight. And there you see on the board there, the Region 2 AA standings, Wartburg, right there at the bottom with Teleco playing. Polk County. Uh, so Wartburg really needs that Polk County game tonight if they want a chance to get into the playoffs, seeing as how they've already lost to Oneida and Bledsoe County. So very important game down in Benton, Tennessee, or up in Benton, Tennessee, or but, uh, over, in Benton. over in Benton, Tennessee. We'll say that. And now we will prepare for our national anthem performed by the Roan County High School Marching Band. anthem tonight performed by the Roan County High School Marching Band. They always do a great job. We are about nine minutes from this game kicking off, so I tell you what, we're going to take our final break. 
And when we get back, we will preview this matchup that we have ahead of us. Rivalry game goes way back, and it is for the Hoot Gibson Memorial Trophy. And that makes it extra special. Uh, as you may remember, a uh, person on our broadcast last year, uh, James Little Hoot Gibson, that's his grandfather. And so yeah, I, I knew, know. I knew Coach Gibson well. He was, he was a legend. I actually used to be his neighbor. Did you? I did. Okay. Rented a house from him. Well, my parents did anyway. So, yeah, I, I knew him a little bit, too. Uh, not as well as you, probably, but uh, I knew him a little bit. And a uh, great guy, great coach. Great, so. great stories. It's interesting that at the Colford Warburg game, you got the uh, the hoop bowl, the first and last is what they call it, because the first place he coached was Coldfield, the last place he coached was Warburg, and then tonight he was a head coach at uh, Kingston and also coached at Loudon for uh, several years. So they've got the Hoot Gibson Memorial Trophy that's up for grabs tonight as well. So special thing. So I uh, tell you what, we will preview that when we get back to our Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. On-site care in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of health care experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. On-site care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, on-site care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. And now on-site care welcomes Darren Wright, a board-certified family nurse practitioner who will be accepting new patients. Call 865-285-9588 to schedule an appointment at on-site care. At Rayburn and Ford in Clinton, we believe in turning moments into memories. From life's milestones and growing families, Ford is there every step of the way. How about a new 2023 Ford Edge all-wheel drive ST, 42545. 2023 Ford F-150 Super Crew, 53398. 2023 Ford Escape all-wheel drive ST, 33939. Local you trust? A new Ford your family can't afford. Rayburn and Ford, your East Tennessee Ford dealership. Pre-planning just it makes the the process just so much easier for the family. It relieves them of having to make some difficult decisions at, at, at a bad time. I've made arrangements with hundreds, I mean hundreds of families that I have never had a family come in and say, "Gee, I wish Mom hadn't have done this." Pre-planning, I think, is one of the best one of the best things you can do for your family, just to, to alleviate those concerns. At Ferris, we want you to get the most out of your time and end each day feeling good. That's why we pioneered exclusive lawnmower suspension technology, allowing for full speed mowing, even over the roughest terrain. Grow your business by getting more done in less time with Ferris. Ferris, work hard, feel good. Found exclusively at independent Ferris dealers. Back to the Elaine Wall of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. As we get closer to kickoff tonight, I'm looking up at the scoreboard. Less than five minutes to go here. Elaine has several years in the real estate biz, serves nearly all of East Tennessee, and consistently produces multiple millions of dollars in sales. What else is there to say? If you need to buy or sell a home, give Elaine a call today. 423-619-6748. It's on your screen there. 423-619-6748. Also, shoot her a text. I'm Aaron Harvey with Coach Dan Shoemaker, and we're getting close to kicking our game off tonight as Loudon is in Roan County to take on Kingston. Both of these programs have fielded a team for 100 years, and both have made a name in their century-long histories. Kingston claimed the state title in 1973. That team was led by Jess Plemons, and on route to that title, the Yellow Jackets defeated Loudon by a score of 13-10. to 10. The Redskins were led by Coach Burt Ratledge at the time, and the next season, his team got revenge. 
Loudon scored the 7 0 victory over Kingston before going on to win the state title of its own, the second in its school's history. The very next year, Loudon again pulled off the 17 7 win in the series and again went on to win a state title. Needless to say, true fans of both of these programs know how big of a deal this game has been in the past. Yeah, yes, it really has. When this series first started, think about this Calvin Coolidge was the president of the United States. Charles Lindbergh had made his solo flight across the Atlantic just a few months earlier. Since then, this has been an important game to both communities. You should have heard the folks up in the press box talking about games back in 71 or 73 or 69. This is an important game for both of these communities. It certainly is. This press box is packed, by the way. There are a lot of media people here from Loudon. This is getting a lot of buzz, as very well it should. Loudon likes to run the football, but the Redskins are also capable of throwing as well. The balanced offense is putting up over 33 points per game, while the defense has held teams to under 12 points per game. Yeah, while watching some film this week, it became real clear to me this Redskin team has a lot of weapons. They can run the ball. They're good up front. They can run or pass. Uh, on defense, they run to the ball about as good as anybody I've seen. They've got two outside linebackers, uh, Collins and Correa, I think, that cover a lot of ground. I, I think this is going to be a great matchup. On your screen there, you see the Kingston captains getting ready to meet midfield with Loudon's captains. They'll do the coin toss, and they'll decide how this game is going to start. We know Kingston won't throw the ball much as it relies on the wing tee, but has athletes capable of running it to max efficiency. We had Kingston win the Yellow Jackets put up seven points against Union County. Scoring a lot of points probably won't be as valuable as controlling the time of possession to keep Loudon's offense off the field tonight, though. However, when the home team is on defense, it's held opponents to just over nine points per game. Yeah, something's got to give there, right? Great offenses, great defenses. Uh, the shotgun wing tee that they run here at Kingston puts a lot of pressure on defenses and a lot of spots. Uh, Gettner is about as good as you get with the ball in his hands, running the ball. But then you got Whitehead and you got Lamb as well. So I think those three viable running threats are a lot to count for. Uh, I think Kingston defense also runs and swarms to the ball as well. I'm looking forward to a great matchup. So Dr. Dan, it is time for you to tell us what your do's and don'ts are as we see Kingston wins the toss. They will defer. Loudon will have the ball to start this game. So with your do's and don'ts, Do's and don'ts, do's and don'ts. It's there time for go. Dr. Dan's do's, do's and, don'ts. and don'ts. I think it's real simple this week for Loudon. They need to strike early, generate big plays, be balanced 